what is up outlaw nation welcome in to the latest edition of the ultimate schmodown after show right here john roca's outlaw nation youtube channel i'm calling of course joining me as always my partners in crime as we are going to sift through this crazy week in the schmodown it's boggs how's boggs doing Yes, man. All good. Super exciting show this week. Um, yeah, I just want to give a couple of shout outs from, from last week as well. Um, Got to give a, you know, because I, I explained last week that, uh, well, two weeks ago, we trebled our kind of, um, how do you say, like our, our intake, um, our revenue kind of uh, on one show. We trebled our previous uh, kind of, uh, you know, a showly amount that we raised last week we actually doubled that so i gotta give a shout out to everyone that's contributing to the show uh love all that you know brian brawler Firus as well you guys are amazing and uh, i gotta give a shout out to tushka as well you know you know what's up tushka so yeah uh, appreciate the support uh, we need that so yeah that was it apart from that uh do you know bring on the schneider cup on him oh baby we're getting apart from close that, yeah, let's good. go let's yeah, go no, we're getting time. close baby you know it's getting real you know who else is closest to me out of all these folks it's soul down in Miami. Closest in Lovely. physical relation. Closest to my heart as well. Aw. Does was Box just being nice to Tushka? Is that I think what he just was. Happened? This is you know, fair is fair, man. Fair is fair. I gotta gotta give a gotta give a shout <laughs> to the guy. So when he does good, he's done good. So <laughs> how are you, Soul? Doing good. Uh, ready to talk Schmo down. Great. I know you were having a uh, 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 not so feel so hot this week, so hopefully this can brighten up the day and nobody better to do that than John Barr, my man. How are you? I'm doing great, as bright as I've ever been. Let me know at any point if it starts to get too dark. If I take off my hat, the lamp should be glinting off of my bald head just right that we'll be able to have six more weeks of spring. Uh, very excited to be here with y'all talking about a very exciting week of matches and some even more exciting announcements. So exciting the cops have come. Oh, dear. Oh, you They've well, come to arrest me I hope they're not and my coming for bright, you. bright head. <laughs> But if they do, this video will be like highly watched in the Schmodown community. I can see the title now. Schmodown After Show. Not post. clickbait. John gets arrested live if on John stream. John gets arrested. Like, and Dream is there? Who is Dream? I don't know. The best part is that your name and Roka's name are not spelled the same. So it would be the best clickbait. Like on, like John on the Outlaw Nation YouTube channel gets arrested. He's like, oh my God, it's Roka. But guys, we got a crazy week. <laughs> But, well, we also had but a lot of fantastic comments from everyone in last week's video. Soul likes to go through, sift those out. Soul, please, let us have it. What do people have to say about our last episode? And we have Josh Maybreak saying, the best Schmodown after show. Write it down, Sean. So, Sean, make sure you get that down. Write it down. Uh, and then we have Darren Wright going, this is the after show with the most character and promise and fun. And we have a funny British guy, so you always get my vote. Keep it up, folks. See you Sunday. So I hope Darren's in the chat. We love you. Okay. Our personal friend here of the show, uh, Aisha Kenya, because this is one of the best Modown review sh shows on YouTube right now. Soul brings the class. Uh, John <laughs> brings the fun. Boggs brings the expertise. And Colin brings all the laughs. And then we have Drunken Prayer going, good show tonight, folks. Hope you all enjoyed your dinner. And Boggs managed to get some sleep. I hope Boggs got some sleep because it's pretty late for him. And then watching Wingblade, great show, guys. But most importantly, Soul. All right. All right. Okay. <laughs> True. Honestly, but come on I'm, now. <laughs> I'm surprised in the document that you didn't write that in Spanish. And there was an exclamation point before your name as well. Honestly, if you missed an opportunity there. But... <laughs> <laughs> folks make sure you after we're done with the live video leave comments down below we know we love having chats with you in the live chat but you know how this youtube game works we need your comments down there we need you to like this video as well make sure you get those stream labs in you know we love super chats but we really love them stream labs so make sure you get those in and be a part of the conversation throughout the show because we got a lot to talk about today we got three fantastic matches we got three fantastic people to break them down. So, without further ado, producer Sean would like to bring in Chance, the Cobra Ellison, Frankie Alvarez, 
and Alex Shawshank. Come on, we got a party up in here on a Saturday night in the Outlaw Nation. Everybody, welcome to the show. Drop that header so yes. can see everybody. Let's go. We got the Brady Bunch up in here. Like hey, guys. Oh. Sorry about that. The six-year-old was trying to take the show over. Well, no. come on in. If he's if he's got a take on the match, we got a we got a whole IG match to break down. So we we need to know if it, he wants my job, he can have it. Absolutely. <laughs> he does. He he, hey, he has as much hair as you at this point in time. So nice. <laughs> Wait, right, I do want to ask real quickly. Um, yeah. I'm pretty stellar, but I had to ask who's the guy that uh, that talked about Soul in that Streamlab? Who was that? Who was that from? Ooh. Which, which uh, from well? watching with Wingblade, he met me. Or not all so. you guys that, that mentioned all y'all was that that mentioned Box Colin. Yeah. Well. Oh, no, 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 no. you mean Aisha? Oh, was, you mean Aisha? Uh, I just want to correct you there. I, 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 I Aisha, Aisha, I, I love you, girl. You're amazing in every single way. Um, but I do want to correct you real quickly and say Soul brings the last loves and everything amazing about the show. Everyone else is fine, but Soul brings it. So I just wanted <laughs> to correct you real quick right there. We know, we know, but everyone. I, I, I also know. I also yeah. know. Colin. We're 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 aware that Soul is the is the true leader of 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 this pack. Chance, yeah. welcome back to the show, man. Bloody How you doing? Hey, thank you for having me. Yeah, I was always uh, always down to come on this show. I'm good. First time uh, on the on the new channel over here on the Outlaw Nation. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, we can have have a little bit of a party. Frankie, welcome in, man. Welcome to the show. Make make your debut this week. Uh, how's it feel? Feeling good, feeling great, feeling great, feeling good. How are you? Doing good. Uh, so we usually we know we, we talked to uh, Chance and Alex before, but you're mm -hmm. new, so we, we'd like to know, man. Uh, what, what's your Schmodown story, man? How how did you get involved in this whole Schmodown story? I wish I had something cool, like I came from the fan leagues, and you know people knew that I was a threat. <laughs> but uh, you know, I've been a fan for years, um, and I've always just you know always kept uh, yeah, as everyone does when they when they watch, they play along and. You know, there was a point where I think over the last like season and a half, I was like, oh, you know, maybe I'm maybe I'm not half that bad. You know, threw threw in it, you know, threw in my uh, threw my hat in the ring, uh, sent it over to Christian, and uh, we had an extensive conversation. You know, just kind of you know about um, you know what he needs out of a player, and I told him I think I can do it. So he's like, all right, I'll I'll put you in the draft. Let's see what happens, and then. Uh, you know, next thing I know, you know, New Jersey zone from a couple a uh, couple minutes up north, Sam Levine decided he wanted to take me for the suspect. So I was super pumped. Oh wow, this is an East Coast party this week. I like that. We oh yeah, four, oh yeah. Four, four, four people here on the East Coast. I like it. Let's do it. We got a match to talk about though, guys. We got it. We're gonna break down in order. We got the IG match. We're gonna run the first singles match between Brother Lomas and Frankie, and then. That final sweet, sweet match of the week with our boy, Chance Elson, and the kid. So first, I'm going to throw it over to John Barr. Please, sir, take us through this inner geekdom match between Saul and John Humphrey. That's right. Well, to give another shout out to Aisha's comment, you know, if you look at these two competitors, uh, John brought the laughs, John brought the fun. And Saul brought the correct answers, uh, is the way this one went. Uh, round one, you know, this this kind of wound up going uh, the way that we thought it would. Uh, Saul having really made a name for himself, stepping into Inner Geekdom last year when he was originally coming into the Schmodown as a singles player, uh, but leapt into Inner Geekdom last year and had a really solid match against Brandon Hanna. Uh, John Humphrey as well uh, did, I believe, one and one overall in Inner Geekdom last year, if I'm not mistaken. So we knew both of these guys had it in them to win matches. Uh, but looking at that first round, it, it did kind of set the pace uh, for what wound up being a uh, pretty dynamic and a uh, little bit of a brutal, brutal match that we had going on. Uh, coming out of round one, Saul had nine total points, only missing one question. Uh, Percy Weasley being the first Weasley child to run through that platform nine and three quarters wall. Uh, and then John missed a couple more. Uh, he also missed the uh, animated Lord of the Rings movie, which I keep forgetting is a movie. What a delight. Uh, the Time Cop movie. Uh, the Apocalypse. I think, though, I had the same guess as, as John on that one. It's hard to really differentiate between all the X-Men movies sometimes. And then Superman 3. A lot, Some tough questions, to be sure. Not as tough as some of the ones we'd see in round two. Round one was tough, Colin. 
it was a little tough for, for my fellow John. You know, I could even before I came home and watched the match, I could kind of feel across the 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 force, the John the John force, as I like to call it. I knew something was amiss. Yeah, you could definitely tell that uh, the, he was one of the players who suffered from being possibly too veteran of the game, and maybe uh, and was not quite <laughs> ready for, for for well, there was a bunch of new stuff. I mean, we talked a bunch of new categories. He just wasn't ready for. I mean, I think a lot of stuff really you could tell he was like, oh, that's this is not your last year, even just last year's IG. So, Box, your initial thoughts on this, uh, Ramon? I mean, obviously. Saul's making I mean, quite a name for himself that for coming in and hearing from Kate two or three weeks ago, this guy's not even supposed to be in this division. Well, to be honest, I just love how absolutely laser focused he was from right from the off, uh, as opposed to obviously John, um, you know, very kind of lighthearted. And, and I think I just showed in the match overall. But I want to hear from Alex first. Uh, obviously, I'm going to give ladies first. Um, you know, nice to have you back on the show as well. Been a while. Uh, but please, yeah, tell me uh, your thoughts on this match, uh, particularly in the first round. Um, this was an interesting match just because we are, this is, these are two very different types of competitors that came to play. Saul, obviously, after his uh, loss against Mr. Brandon Hanna, uh last season during the ig tournament it was a huge loss for the den at that point and i think son obviously we already know was setting his ass off the no cards the books his his binders of stuff is is kind of legendary at this point um so he go, went in very focused obviously and he it seemed like he had a lot more knowledge about how to really prepare for the game john humphreys he is much more of a casual competitor he is very vocally uh, about that and he's not a guy that studies all that much he kind of, he's like oh rewatch some movies but by no means i'm not gonna use note cards i'm not gonna read books i'm not gonna wick Wikipedia, every single film that I watch <laughs> regarding IG. And so it's, these are very different, two different approaches. So going into it, I was like, obviously, Saul. It's a given. Yeah, Saul to me is uh, absolutely untouchable right right now. He, he just, he, he's got this let's, vibe. Let's calm that down, Colin. He's no, 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 no. I just yet. mean his vibe. His vibe. Me. his vibe is, he's got a well, vibe. Well, until you everybody gotta... gets vaccinated, technically, he's, okay. oh, oh, he's, he's, not, he's not wrong. <laughs> You got to be careful because we got another IG competitor in here, and and calling someone mm -hmm. untouchable that might set them on a yeah, yeah, yeah. you know on a warpath. No, no, oh, no, 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 no. IG, I, I, no IG competitor is untouchable. Mars is not Chance untouchable. If Chance wants to watch me talk, Chandra is not untouchable. Else. Obviously, it, I mean, like okay, especially you know, this season, right? At this point. Just, his just vibe that, that Boggs was describing. I love how his laser focus intensity. That to me was the vibe of that he felt that going into the match. So, so the term you're looking for is unshakable is what you is what you really yes, mean unshakable yes, not yes. untouched yes, yes as someone who yes. you know pioneered the unshakable attitude Ooh, yes, <laughs> in his runners, as of late well and, and, and also and I know that looks like oh yeah also like uh pioneered being a singles competitor that wound up you know taking a step into ig just to kind of see how it felt and then wound up looking pretty dang good coming out of it. So, I mean, definitely, I was curious as well what your thoughts were seeing these two guys who have kind of done what you have done before and are now trying to have similar success. I honestly didn't know Saul was a main, a main singles player. I thought he was, like, so, like mostly IG, which... Oh, here's Saul. It's no. John Barr. Thank you for asking. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, yeah, I mean, Saul wasn't <laughs> bad against Brandon Hanna. He just ran into Brandon Hanna. Before Brandon Hanna blew it, as he tends to do in this league, let's be honest. Um, but no, yeah, I feel, he was someone I was looking at. I'm like, yeah, he's got he's got potential. I wouldn't draft him. I wouldn't pick him up. He could can, can, can stay in the den for all I care. But he's got potential. I'd be curious to see what, what he can do. And yeah, we saw what he can do. He can play extremely well. So I'm curious, what what were what were you looking at here? Because I love how like Humphrey seems to be a player that needs momentum. He just couldn't find it. Yeah, John definitely comes in with like more of the laughs and more of the laid back. When he gets that momentum, he plays really well, and we've seen that last year against Janine. But um, 
Saul was, like you said, laser focused. And then I also love just the fact the jokes about Percy Weasley as a Harry Potter fan goes, oh, he's not a real Weasley. Go Kate going, I'm glad you got that question wrong. And so that part just made me laugh a lot. Funny thing is he's in like a stack. It's in like a surprise amount of movies, but you just never notice him. <laughs> like, yeah. You're in this many. How, how dare you? Okay. Let's not knock. <laughs> per Percy the is the worst Weasley this side of Jenny. <laughs> is he the werewolf? No. no, that's true. No, that's, cool. no, that's, that's Bill. Make, that's Bill. That make him Bill. interesting. However, 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 if we're going to have an argument about the sexiest Weasley, let me remind you a man George. named Charlie exists. Um, George true. and Fred are, are tied for second place. We never, no, no, specifically George. It has to be George. <laughs> it, Is it the like, loss of an ear that does it for you? or The loss of an oh. ear and the fact that he's, you know, alive. That makes that, that kind yeah, of funny. I don't know. No <laughs> king shaming. He, no king shaming here, champ. Yeah, somebody hasn't <laughs> seen the movie Ghost. Uh, then no. moving on. <laughs> Look, if Fred, if Fred wants to come make probably some pottery, I'll be down with that. But right now, it's all George. That's right. It's in the name of the books, for Christ's sake. Uh, then moving on to round two, Frankie. I want to toss it over to you. I don't know how much of a of a Marvel fan you are. But uh, this was kind of, you know, a category where in inner geekdom it can be kind of vague. Saul did spin away from fantasy sci-fi and got a, got a little stuck with Marvel. Uh, but he did a pretty good job with it, all things considered. How did you feel about the questions, just uh, watching them take place? Uh, I'm a pretty uh, I'm a pretty big Marvel fan, pretty big comic book movie fan uh, in general. Uh, so seeing those Marvel questions, I felt that they were tough but doable for people that have watched and seen the movies and <clears throat> spent hours looking up you know easter eggs and stuff like that i think the only one that really tripped me up was the you know what does uh norman osborne bring to uh, as a gift to the dinner um but i thought that you know again it, it seemed like those questions were doable it didn't seem like it was something that uh was going to you know put anyone in a corner i mean i remember from years past some of these questions that we've heard and you know, in particular, the Lord of the Rings movies, you know, were just like, how do you even, you know, come up with this stuff? So um, I, I did think that, you know, yes, the outcome was <clears throat> a bit one sided, uh, but John did have you know some said. questions. Yeah, John did have some questions that were uh, thrown at him that weren't layups, uh, you know, if, if you're if you have not watched those movies within the last couple of months. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was interesting, and Alex, I'll, I'll kind of toss it over to you. Obviously, I think uh, with that one question uh, that Saul missed, the J. Jonah Jameson, uh, that pills when he managed to get a steal off of Saul, do you think that maybe made John feel especially comfortable about spending Spider-Man, and maybe that might not have been so good of a thing to do? <laughs> um, it, I, I, I... I think, well, Chance actually was in a very similar situation where he ended up spinning uh, a category that is very new to the wheel. And it, it just comes down to whether or not you want to take the risk and go for it, regardless of how you feel about how strong you feel about it, because you have no idea what to expect. Um, it, it was, I think it was a huge gamble on his part. And he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm just going with my gut on this. And he's like, and he even admitted openly, he's like, I don't feel super strong on it. I don't even feel strong on it, but I kind of want to find out what's on in it, in it anyway. <laughs> so I don't feel like he really thought through selecting that category, to be honest. I think he was just more curious than anything. He wasn't really playing for strategy and for winning, honestly, but but I think that with okay, like Spider-Man, I think it's a calculated risk because you look at what mm -hmm. else on the wheel. I want to say they're more, they're more broader thing. Like Marvel, especially, it's been like MC is yeah. not a thing anymore. It's all yes. of Marvel, so that's even more of a crapshoot slice now. Like Spider-Man, it's very definable slice. Like it's seven, eight movies. Like it's it's not really hard to no Saul. <laughs> it's, it's it's not really. I mean, and <clears throat> look, if, you, if you're a person with a pulse, you've seen a Spider-Man. You've probably seen every Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. Like, most popular Marvel hero of all time, you've seen his movie. So I don't, like, I, I understand the reason you're taking it. Like, and it's, it was someone, that's, a character as mainstream as that, movies mainstream as that, like, you feel comfortable with it. It's just he got, got questions that are a little deeper. Like, admittedly, that makes me question. I had to get, I had to guess free kick. I, I would have got multiple on that one, mm -hmm. too, but I had to guess. Like, I knew it was a dessert, but I was thinking pie. 
I'm just like, oh, mm-hmm. okay, yeah. Like, once he's freaking like, oh, yeah, fruitcake, because that's what Norman, Os- that's what Norman Osborne is in that movie. He is a fruitcake. True. Good call. <laughs> but, okay, well, that's the thing. When you when you are getting a category that finite compared to, say, graphic novels or Marvel films where it's so much more expansive, you know for a fact you're going to get deeper questions. Fair. And that is a risk you know you're going to have to take. But I would and rather so- take, I'd rather take a, a chance mm-hmm. on, I'd rather take a risk on, a more yeah. more mainstream movie that I've seen multiple times than maybe take a broader category and get a deep plot question movie I've seen like once. Yeah, That's I think true. I I think it makes sense that they're a little deeper for the Marvel and and I assume they will be for DC if 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 that is I don't think it's been spun yet, but it's everyone watches those movies all the time. I mean they exactly. they are the most popular movies in the world for a reason. So it almost kind of goes hand in hand with the fact that they're going to be a little deeper because people get the oppor- there I mean there are people that spend hours every single day just coming up, you know, with Easter eggs and little things that are people find in dissecting these movies. So, um, it, it, it I, I, to, it, to an extent, I agree. If you're going to pick Marvel and DC, you need to be prepared for what comes with it. Um, you know, so choose, choose carefully if that's what you're going to stick with. Choose wisely. Choose yeah. wisely. And high, it kind of ends high up, risk, I, high reward. Yeah. I think the mm-hmm. moment, I mean, it kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier about how, like, this is not the same, this is not the same Schmodown that John Humphrey played in the last time. I think that might just be the moment. And, he, just needed to get a couple licks in the new showdown. It'll come back. He knows what movies he needs to study. Obviously, there's a couple things that they keep throwing in there. It's not the same. This used to be, I mean, you guys remember? A few seasons ago, you used to know the order of the questions for the first 10 questions in IG, singles. It was all basically the same for the, you know, for all the matches. Now they're switching it up, it, catching you off guard, really making you stay on your toes and not really letting you ever get comfortable. You don't know what's coming. I mean, really excited. Obviously, this bites Humphrey in the butt because he gets KO'd by Saul. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, Boggs, your, your thoughts on, like, just this showing by Saul to come out after having not played since, essentially, last summer? Yeah, some big points to prove. Uh, and I think he proved it for the most part. You know, obviously, Humphrey didn't have the, the great showing. But I also love Kate in this match. The little that we got of her, you know, she can just kind of actually – contribute way more um you know she called the knockout as well like i thought you know what she's talking about but she absolutely called it so you know fair play Mm -hmm. uh and yeah i just thought she she yeah i just liked now she can fully flex as a manager and uh you know and and just play properly as opposed to being the more character thing so yeah i I was kind of happy for her and for soul really because he got to kind of establish himself as a legit ig threat now uh talking about ig threat chance uh (laughs) what's your overall so thinking of is he a? Is he one to look out for? Is he a top contender? You know, obviously, you know, he thinks he's I'm one not, look out in the winner. comments. I am not gonna say he's a top contender. Okay. All right, no, no, he does not get that distinction yet. Why beats some actual competition first, then we can talk. But he is someone who is on the precipice mm-hmm. of being a contender. Now, the rest of that's gonna all come down on his support system because I know I wouldn't get to where I was without my team. You know, the Dungeon got a great IG support system. What does the Den have? Besides Saul, who else who else they got IG? Uh God up Ben. Ah. <laughs> no. uh, who else they got? I mean, right now I can tell you they've got tied for third place as far as the factions go, because right now they are right <laughs> up in line with swag and corruption. <laughs> Let's let's hold, talk, let's sorry. let's calm let's calm that down though. It's like we're like not even five matches in. Yeah. We're not going to be calling who's who's going to be first place by the end of the season. Well, that's why I didn't say that. That's like, yeah, <laughs> that's, 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 that's going to be. Is it the curve's yeah. going to repeat? But you know, we're not yeah. going to say that now. Mm. Yeah, I think Riley's a good punching bag. I think if he needs somebody to go off of, Riley's not bad to hang out with for a study session. Peggy in the chat as well. Peggy but not with well. IG. Uh, yeah, you never know. You exactly. never know. But Unless I mean, we got to talk about the winner here. I mean, we. I mean. I mean yeah, this guy, he, he's Saul. What are your thoughts about Saul? <laughs> the fact that our names are very close to each other that makes things confusing sometimes. Especially, I think Boggs has finally learned how to say our names like separately. So it took about well, two weeks, but we got him there. <laughs> we got him there. Right. You guys don't understand me, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> That that was definitely oh, oh. oh. <laughs> you can get oh. the boy mad. Well, Chance, Chance, you better say sorry quick. <clears throat> no, 
I don't Sir, this is the ultimate showdown Arby's, all right? You don't need to get... <laughs> Sir, this is, this is Guys, Arby's. Yeah. Guys, Put the cool. Arby's sauce packet down, please. You guys, I hate to break it to y'all, but Saul doesn't have the balls to come on and, like, actually chat Ooh. this up. I mean, not no. really. No. He's a lot of talk. There's uh, a lot of action, did... so... A man with commitment to hair like that, I wouldn't put anything past him. I, yeah. I don't know. Well, I mean, I he's know. not here, so I mean, clearly Alex yeah. is I mean, He's probably I mean, busy probably, combing that beard. I mean, getting... like, I, I love yeah. being proven wrong. No, you don't. Probably, no, you he's probably don't. Pick it, picking, picking the bugs out of the it's beard right so now. Producer Sean, <laughs> give him the link. Give this man the link. We need this There's man. a reason why you were my second draft pick in my Two of my fantasy leagues, okay, Chance. I've lost. I, went, I, 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 yeah, I dropped. I dropped to the second round. And I, <laughs> I hope I was. No, I hope I was number three, right? Oh, calm down. And no, I was in the no, third round, right? No, I'm, I I'm, thought Soul was number one. If I'm not a first round, yeah, pick, don't wait, even, where was I on that sheet? <laughs> Oh, guys, gosh. this is getting. You you guys are great. This is fantastic. <laughs> I, the, the, Saturday nights couldn't ask for anything better. This is fantastic. This show. Wait, oh, wait, guys, oh, guys. Uh, I'm I'm a little concerned about the, what Saul is saying in the in the chat here. Should we give him the link? I don't know. Let him bring him in. Bring bring him in. Space. It, it's up to the it's up to the guests. You know. I mean, I I don't want him to crash his show. I mean, I I don't know how I don't know how I feel about that. But if 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 you guys are comfortable, I'll send him the link. Let him in. Alex, you okay? No. Alex doesn't even he think can, he's gonna he show up. He can he can try. <laughs> I mean, oh. like, what is he gonna do? Okay. Give the man the link, Sean. Give the man the link. All right. I mean, Let's on. see what happens. Yeah. Oh dear. You Everyone. guys are in trouble now. Pascal saying, you guys are in trouble link. now. Canada Rock saying, give him the link. Hello. Jesse Swift in the chat. What a squad. Mm -hmm. Soda saying, don't throw rocks at someone holding a machine gun. That's also true. Just Jesse, I, I throw a shot at your faction, but I felt like we've done that. I've done enough damage to you this week, so I'll let you off this time. Mm -hmm. Yikes. This, this faction warfare, it just brings out the what, best what of faction? all of you, I swear. What faction are you talking about? The Mer are they, the Mercs even the still Mercs. around at this point? God. I mean, oh. I guess, maybe. Oh, I don't know. They're setting right. records. They're setting <laughs> they, records. They are certainly <laughs> setting <laughs> records. <laughs> hey, hey, just saying, corruption would have been the exact same place at the very beginning of the season last year. If we were doing the negative points at the very beginning, so yeah, this but, doesn't mean but, this doesn't mean anything. But also, one of our main players didn't go out and lose in the first couple of matches, so I yeah, keep that in mind. That's true. <laughs> which we'll get, which we'll get to later, but Aww. yeah. Then again, Jesse, I'll, I'll, I'll let you slide this time. This time. Boggs, what what's what what's going on here, man? We got a whole bunch of craziness going here. We got, I mean, th where you where are you? You at? guys better wake up and apologize because he's coming in hot. So I've got feelings. So no. uh, okay, okay. So so what's that? So Chance so called him what? So Chance said he's not a top contender. Alex said he hasn't got the balls, and Frank said what? I, I mean, it seems like he's just a keyboard warrior right now in the comments, uh, you know, and, and I, I think I've said time, enough man, about man. how I feel about those keyboard warriors. Whoa! Oh. <laughs> it wasn't me. It wasn't me. The, beard, the bearded wonder himself. So what's up? What's, 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 let's talk about this. Let's oh, let's um, let's, we got a lot of unpacking to do. It's like we just got off a Titanic type voyage and we got steamer trunks. Let's go. What's on your mind? Well, first of all, welcome each and every one of you to the Saul Show. I appreciate it. I appreciate you being on my show like this. What's on everyone's mind? Let's talk about this match. I'm I think tired you're of talking about it, but everyone seems you want to dissect every nuance of this match. I don't like the match. How about that? I'm not a fan of it. It's not what well, I wanted like to put into the world. Well, what did you want to put in the world? I wanted to inspire people to have to cancel appointments and leave work early to click on that link. And you know what? I made some decisions going up. You guys have all seen me talk. You've all heard me talk plenty. You all know I can do it. And tr trust me, this is going to be a year in which you hear that an awful lot. You're going to hear my mouth. John Humphreys is a good dude. He's a funny dude. And I spared him. I let him be the one sacrifice to the rest of the schmodown. Because I didn't want to distract anybody from watching what I could do with the table. And you know what? It's not the performance I wanted to give. It's not my best. It's not everything. It's, it's pretty fucking far, excuse me, pretty far away from my ceiling. And there is a lot more to come. And I promise, swear, and vow that to each and every one of you and each and every one of you tuning in right now. It's not good enough for me. It wasn't good enough. Take that chance. Dude. It wasn't good enough. 
I admire, I admire your attitude. I, I, I appreciate that. You know, it doesn't matter how well you do, it's not good enough. And I do agree with that because it's not good enough to be top contenders, you know, like the Knees, the Parkers, the Mike Kalinowskis. But you know what? I think you're going to step up and when, if and when you come face, face with me, you're going to make it interesting. And I'm excited for it. Yeah, it's going to be beyond interesting, Chance. People are going to have to literally, they're going, oh, my God, I had a date. I'm going to cancel it to watch Saul and the Cobra go at it. Saul's been oh, humiliating him on Twitter all week. I can't wait to see how this works out. <laughs> humi- That's humili- how this humili- is going to play. Humiliate me. Yes. You. That's how this is going to work. That's how everyone's getting it. You don't get it. Yeah. John you know, fine, Humphrey fine. was can, the first, can humi- last and humili- only. Humiliate me on Twitter. Humiliate me on Twitter. I'll humiliate, humiliate you in the match. All right? Nah, it ain't going to happen either, Mushmouth. Please. You listen up. That's not going to happen either. Okay? I'm bringing it all. Everywhere you're going to get hit. There's from all sides. I'm going to come to you on social. People are going to be the people are like, oh, my God, did you hear what Saul said about Chance? I'm going to be saying it about everybody. John Humphrey's the only one who got the pass this year because I thought it was a good idea to do something different, show everybody here. I got fans. Yeah, I had fans before I was ever in this mode in this space. I can't believe that. To this day, I can't believe it. These people follow me. They tweet. They, they like it. When I make fun of somebody, they retweet it and go, hey, look, Saul's making fun of Suge Knight again. Everyone laughs. And I don't follow them back. I'm not on their Patreon page. I don't super chat them. And they're still there for me. And you know what? I know each and every one of you. And I owe those people. I owe each and every one of those people that bother Harloff in the Facebook group going, hey, maybe Saul gets another match. Hey, maybe have Saul call in SEN Live. Maybe have Saul in studio. I know who you all are. And that's a debt that I'm going to love paying back every single chance I get this year. I'm going to give you elevated play. I'm going to give you elevate. I'm going to cut promos that have never been cut. I'm going to take this a little further. I see what I did wrong, and I'm not going to do it again. I knocked out John Humphrey. I'm, I'm, they call me the negative zone around my faction now because I just suck up all the team's points. I, I take points. I take points that you don't even have yet. That's what I'm up to this year. In fact, Christian just sent me a FedEx. It's the actual point Koi would have had. I'm going to frame it and put it on the wall. It's going to be really great. I'm going to get a whole collection this year. It's going to look like an old-timey baseball scoreboard. All right? Because I'm coming in hot. Everyone's going to get it. No more pardons. No more. But I thought we were friends. And don't DM your managers or DM me or DM my managers. This is it. IG is the gladiator class of the Schmodown. This is the real Schmodown. This is where the highest level of competition is. And I expect everyone's best. No more joke characters. No more... Real rejects doing bits, no more half-assing it, no more not studying it. If I suspect anyone's not bringing the same level of obsession into this as I am, I'm going to smoke you out, and you're going to get beat worse. I am so about this. <laughs> this is awesome. This is uh, anyone who, who I mean, me. quit laughing at him. Who's bringing the popcorn and the drinks? I'm ready to watch this all night. No, I'll I'll watch look, this you look like right we're now. real comfortable. Uh, Alex, that's, 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 that's one of the best fake laughs I've ever heard you do, and I've heard you do a lot of them. That was really good. <laughs> it's <Hi>. excellent. <laughs> what you got, Alex? Yeah, what's on your mind? He's just so cute. I just want to yeah, put him into right. make him into a little cute. plushy bear. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, Saul, I think you're. You just keep better, talking right? about me, Alex. You go on all your shows. I know, and you keep is, talking about no. people like me. That's what you're here for, and I appreciate that. I wish I could pat you on the head. Good. I, I would actually <laughs> be really happy with that. Mm. That was really good timing. <laughs> oh. Um, the thing is, um, well, the thing is, I think it's, I, I think you're a fine competitor, so I think you have a lot of potential. I think it's a matter of time before you're definitely in the conversation. I've one of the top ten IG competitors in Schmodown. Top ten. So yeah, I think it's my top ten. Yeah. Yeah, so I think it's it's definitely yeah, you're, you're, you're not, a matter you're not of time. Five, I'll tell you that. I, I, I yeah, right. you know I think it's a, sure. it's a matter of sure time. thing, Chancy. And I'm excited to see see it happen. You know, and I'm excited to see you go up against some other competitors. I'm excited to see. Who knows? You could totally beat Hannah. Yeah, don't worry about that. That situation, that situation is not Man. something totally. to worry about. That's totally. a situation that will take care of All itself. Right. Okay. All right. That is something right. that, and it, and you know what? I love Hannah and his smart ass little gifts on Twitter. Shows how laser mm. focused he is on Eric Zipper. Brandon, mm. let me let me let me talk to you right now. If Zipper kicks your ass, which he can completely do, if mm. he does that, which is likely, they won't let me kill you. 
So you better <laughs> knock it off and start paying attention. I'm, I, you know what? I said earlier today, I told somebody, do you know what I'm going to do? You know what I am? I'm Brandon Hanna's best friend. I'm the only one that loves him for who he is. And I'm the only one who's going to tell him like it is. You know what? Maybe, I, maybe I've ran around and screamed about him too much. Maybe I should take the gentle approach. Maybe I fly out and I hug him and I stroke his, his I tussle his locks there. So that adorable. <laughs> Brandon Hanna is the first guy in, a, in 30 years to get a perm. That's adorable. <laughs> Maybe I go out there and I help him study because Zipper, Zipper could whoop this kid's ass and he's out there tweeting me about my interviews and my matches. That's Again, that's who Brandon Hanna is. That's, his, that's a lack of discipline and a lack of focus. He's a very smart guy, Brandon Hanna. But I've never met someone so smart that they couldn't outsmart themselves. And you're going to see that. You're going to see that from him time and time again. And I tell you what, I, I, you know what? I would go over his house and help him study. I'd bring my notes. He has to beat Zipper. Or otherwise, this my dream goes away, and I can't have that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write I'm going to write trivia questions about the Star Trek and Lord of the Rings. I'm just going to tie them to rocks and throw them through his window. <laughs> I will do. It. Brandon, I am here for you. Do you understand? I'm your only friend. I love you, Brandon. I love you. I love all my bitches, and I love you the most. All right. <laughs> Anything you need to get past Zipper, because Zipper right now is somewhere <laughs> sparring with Don Dapani, and you're out there getting perms, doing YouTube shows, thinking you're Bill Nye the Science Guy. This is going to be a problem. I can see it now. Uh, well, not to besmirch all YouTube shows like this one is, but I, I did have a question for you, Saul. Uh, it, it, it seems like you do have a, a lot of opinions, a lot of hard stances. I was, I was curious why you don't do uh, reaction shows like this more often, maybe. Look, the Saul show is wherever I go. I'm like a traveling court, all right? Wherever I am, that's the Saul show. And wherever I, I get to set up shop, you guys should be lucky that I do. Quite frankly... These shows aren't part of my preparation because I, my preparation is actual preparation. I'm busy. I, the, on, I started, I, I, I've been training since before the draft. My training never stopped. With the expansion of IG, my training camps have, have expanded fantastically. I have better things to do when it comes to the Schmodown than come on these shows and dissect, gee, that question was really hard. I Golly, gee, I wish I had his question. I'm tired of hearing this shit. Oh, that was a really I'm good tired John of hearing Barr. when everyone... Whenever anyone spins something that they would get devastated in, you got to hear some monologue like, oh, you know, I would do exemplar in this slice. But I tell you what, there's this other shut up and spin away. I don't need to talk about this part of the, the matches. There's plenty of schmucks running around here that all they want to do is get on the ultimate Schmodown show. All they want to do is on let, get, get on Let's Get Ready. All they want to do is have Alex be snotty to them on call to action. It's like why they're here. I am here in the Schmodown for a very different reason. I'm not here for every other. I'm not here for the likes. I'm not here to be retweeted and loved and have a Patreon. That's not what I'm playing the Schmodown for. I derive great meaning from being a Schmodown competitor. And this is not something doing the shows, doing the interviews. This slows me down. All right. And you know what? I got to be frank with you. The small pack, the brave people who were the early adapters to be fans of mine. Even before I was in the Schmodown, I had fans, which blew me, which blew me away. Again, I can't. I'm never going to shut up about this. People who, who signed up and sit front row center for the for the Saul show, yeah, I'll do cornrows. What's that? That's what, I'll do that right now. You think I'm scared to do that? I got plenty do, of this. I'll, I'll do, do cornrows. What are those? No, I should have said what's up. I appreciate you jumping. <laughs> I know you said what's up. Uh, okay, I'm like, do you not know cornrows? <laughs> I know what they are. So we're getting education. <laughs> for someone as tr transparently white as I am, that would be tragic. But. But listen, loyalty goes big with me, and I've had some shows be nothing but loyal to me. And I reward their loyalty by having me grace them with the Saul show. Like, for example, if I want – Suge Knight, 323, if, if, I, if I needed the, the, the children of my enemies kidnapped, he would do that for me. That's how loyal he is to me. If I showed up to Justin Hamilton's house – at 3 a.m. on a Tuesday with a hockey bag that was leaking blood, I wouldn't have to say a word to him before he started going in the backyard and digging a hole. That's the type of loyalty that I reward. Ferris Muthana, when Ferris Muthana found out I wasn't going to have another match for almost a year after Brandon Hanna, he had to go into therapy. He had to get reconditioned to learn how to be happy again when he couldn't look forward to my match anymore. 
I, that's loyalty that these guys show me, and that's loyalty that I reward and will always reward. And you know what? I haven't gotten a chance. You know, a lot of these shows, they, you know, they, they, they shake my hand when they meet me in person. And they talk shit about me the next day. I've had a lot of that, and I don't care for that. So I take those shows, and I punish them. I take me out of the equation, which is the worst thing I could do for anybody. That's why I don't always do these shows. Well, if only points were awarded to factions based off of the promos, because my God. I'm <laughs> working on it. I'm working on it. And so the Den might have contended in top three, maybe. Yo, don't worry about the Den this year. The Den's up to I'm not, something. I'm really right? not. And that's I, that's how right. I'm not worried about you. I am. You're very confident, Chance. I love that. I love that. Some of my right. favorite things to watch. Should we go now, Fox? <laughs> what do you think? Do, do we need to No, nah, you know what? You? I ain't gonna lie, I love it. I love the intensity. I love that you're coming in like a fighter, like a contender, like you're hungry, like you got points to prove. Uh, let let the people who play for fun, let them do it. Let them do it in the corner, or let them do it. You know, on the on the Wednesday. It sounds like you wanna, you know, you wanna go after the titles. You wanna, you know, hit them pay per views. Uh, you know, you wanna play the big boys like like this one below. So, and I hear the same tendencies in Chance. You know, like Chance ain't doing it for a Patreon. Chance ain't doing it for these kind of things. They do it for like. I get, it's almost like a spiritual thing. Like I got points to prove, I got things to win, I got titles to win, I got you know that kind of thing. So I love it. I love it. I got to be honest. It's the difference so, so. between have, wanting something and in, in, in I, I I love difficult things. I love kind of being. There's a mindset. There's a place that my body takes me when I am overwhelmed by difficulty and challenge, in which it becomes very sponge like, and I can't achieve it in other ways. I like I like waking up and doing hard things. I derive great meaning from being a Schmodown player. It's bigger to me than just having fun. I don't want to go answer some questions about Batman and then go hang back at Barney's Beanery. Those are all great things. Those are all fun things that maybe I can be a part of. But it's deeper for me. I'm looking for something else here. And if you give me an opponent who's just kind of waffling, who's just trying to get subscribers to their YouTube channel, no offense there, Chris Duckman, or what your name is, that's fine. But I'm coming in a different way. Damn and what him. I'm going to do is whoever. What, isn't that Chris Tuckman? Is that? Oh, <laughs> oh, I forgot the fucking name. I, you know, boy, I ate curse too. Boy, you need, to, you need to study something else instead of those Batman movies. Let me tell you. But, I'm doing pretty good with the Batman movies. Don't worry about that. But, you know, I, this, is, this, is, it, 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 this, this situation that I stumbled upon has to, again, it gives me meaning. It gets me up. And I don't care if you want to laugh at how seriously I take it. The fact that I want the Schmodown fans to be excited when they see my name, the fact that they want to see that match because they want to see someone who's not even that talented, just obsessed. If you want to take advantage of the fact that I am obsessed with answering movie trivia questions, I think you can kick back and have a lot of fun with it. If not, get fucked. I don't need you. There you go. So we got a stream labs here from Canada Rocks goes, this is for letting Saul into the link. And then I have a question for you, Saul. Who's next on the Saul chopping block? Who, who do you want to go after? Doesn't matter. It's not my, it's not the opponent. It's me. I'm only playing myself out there. I am my preparation. My preparation will be perfect. My preparation will be sterling. They call me the sterling one. That's what people have been calling me my whole life. And it will be sterling. And I tell you what, you brought up Kate Mullen. You know, this brings, this is a good transition. You brought up Kate Mulligan when I was uh, when you uh, when I was in that uh, that chat there. Let me explain something. Without Kate Mulligan, I would have lost that match to John Humphrey. No, no doubt in my mind. I really? develop I developed a training system of how to get ready for a Schmodown match, and I created I wrote a program that would have taken a month, and I got less than two weeks to get ready for my match. Five days in, it was not working. It couldn't work. You can't just if you couldn't shrink ray it. You can't just take it and make it smaller. Kay Mulligan literally said things to me that if, if, a, if a grown man said to me, we'd probably step outside. She sorted me the fuck out, rearranged my training schedule, rearranged how I train and when I train. And she being able to, I was in the woods, man. I couldn't see the forest. She could. And she sorted me out proper. And without her doing that, I could not have gotten back on track and done and did what I did to John Humphrey. So Kate Mulligan, to me, is the best manager in the Schmodown because she can do something like that to someone like me. And I'm not fun to talk to sometimes. Good luck telling me what to do. I, I hope none of you have that experience have to try to do that. I'm a little, you know, 
jumpy at times. All right. Kate Mulligan can navigate scenarios that don't even get talked about on these after shows. You guys don't even understand. There's another, there's three dimensions to the Schmodown. There's three. There's the game, there's the show, and there's the production. Anybody wants to be great, you got to be great at one of those and then hope to be great at the other eventually, the other two eventually. Kate Mulligan is great at all of them. She can do things and navigate scenarios other managers simply cannot do. They don't have the wherewithal or the intelligence or the experience that she has. And that is why she's the best Schmodown manager. I'm not kissing her ass, not blowing smoke up her ass. This is the truth. I've witnessed it time and time again. Oh, cool. Colin, you're muted every you're muted, time. Colin. Every time. <laughs> oh, sweet, precious boy. Yeah, you, can, you can go off on. But yeah, um, <laughs> <laughs> thanks so much for coming on. So, uh, you know, gate crashed the show. Um, great. So, uh, any final questions, Alex? Anything you want to say to Sol? Honestly, oh. I'm it. Honestly, you have convinced me, Sol. Last season was definitely a learning experience for Kay, um, as with like a lot of managers, Sam Levine and uh, several other managers. But you just convinced me that she is. I'm definitely looking out for her this season. Now, that's not even. That's not even a quarter of it. That's not even. That's just what she did with me. There's other stories that other people can tell about what she's doing and how she's getting it done. This is a new look den from top to bottom. We, me, I, I talked to members of the den more in two or three days than we did the entire season last year. This is a different unit. It's a mm -hmm. different mindset. And it's a top-down type situation. And she's got the reins to this, this chariot of friggin' lions. She's got it pretty sturdy. And I, you, 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 you want to send Kay Mulligan's the character or that she doesn't. You, you, people are curious about what managers actually do. You don't have to worry about it. You just take my word. This one is the best one. I know what the other managers do or what they don't do, more importantly. Well, I'm excited to see that being put to the test in a future match. Uh, please, Frank, any question, anything you want to say to, to Sol? Uh, uh, Sol, sorry, before you go. I, mean, I, got, I got nothing to say. He's... He's in a different league. He's not of my concern. So keep doing your thing, Saul. You had a great match. And let's see if you can uh, keep up that momentum because doing it once is impressive. Doing it consistently, that's uh, legendary. There you, go. there you go. And what about you, Chance? Uh, Any final thoughts? I guess I think it's enough about Saul. Look, I, res I respect this dude a ton. Like You, 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 put, you put him working. Put working, clearly. Uh, all the rest of by Kate Mulligan. I'm sure she's good. She's no Shannon Barney. Who's the real best manager in the Schmodown. And she's so good that every manager is now trying to like pioneer her style, which is fine. I mean, imitation is the best form of flattery. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that's true. But uh, so, yeah, you know, keep, def keep, doing, keep doing not. what you do. Keep doing what you do. And we'll, we'll see where you go. No, don't so now that I'm keep... finally not muted anymore, <laughs> thank you for coming and crashing the show. And I just got to say, man, you remind me of a season one, season two player that actually gives a shit. Like, seriously. Like, and I mean that with all respect. You come in here and you are playing your game and you're playing it your way. There are people who have come into this league, and I mean this with all respect, who were coming in to come in and promote something else. You are not that kind of person, and you are coming in here to play trivia, and you are coming here to play the Schmodown, like you said, on all three levels. And we can tell that you, and the fact that you notice all three levels and are able to recognize that and apply that while you're in the zone the whole time. And with the performance that you put on, man, hats off to you, dude. I cannot wait to see your next match, man. Is that it? Wait. We done here? Yeah, Don't I, take think, that we're off again, I think we're John. good. I'm, 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 I'm done. I'm good. My, that Humphrey match, it ain't my best. I'm not happy with it. I hate the match. But you should all watch it. You all, so you can see what I'm talking about. Right now, watch. I'm, I'm, I'm a lot for a lot. Pretty soon, I'm going to be too much for just about everybody. See you soon, Chance. See you soon, so. Ooh. Ooh, love it. Oh, that Damn. was great. I, I'm sorry about that, guys. I don't know. Yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't know it was going to go down like that. Uh, yeah. Guys, I apologize. I didn't. I, if if sending him the link meant that, I, I totally apologize. Show got off the rails. I apologize. Let's just, uh, you know, continue on with the rest of the show. I who is Shug Knight? Is, do I have to know who that is? Let's, let's not concern that. I okay. believe he was a music producer in the 1990s <clears throat> in Los Angeles. Yes, and then uh, did some things. Not, it's not did, so great thing with And did some things, and did some things that we're not going to talk about on the show, but what we are going to talk about <laughs> is the singles match between Brother Lomas and this man right here, Frankie Alvarez. This was 
Uh, back to singles. Oh, we got someone's government name up there, looks like. Oh, oh. government name. Who the hell is that? I don't know who that is. Oh, man. That's on the, uh, that's on the Schmodown wiki that's page. That's a Benny Hanna? What the hell is that? <laughs> that's like, um, that's like if you go try to find a, uh, uh, Kareem, a Kareem rookie card, and you have to go find his name before he changed his name. Oh, before he changed it, or, or, <laughs> trying, to find, or, try, or trying to find like uh, a Ron Artest card now. Exactly. Oh, impossible. Hard as fuck. He just changed it back to Meta Artest, so I thought that, that was. <laughs> yeah, he changed it again. Changed it again. But he, he wasn't with the World Peace anymore. <laughs> yeah, he was done with the World Peace. This guy's not done with it. We're done. God damn you, Ron Artest. Soul, this match is all yours. Walk us through it. Okay, let's get right into it. So first off, I want to talk with that promo that Gucci and um, Brother Lomos had. Goes Gucci having a, as he called it, confectional. <laughs> with uh, Brother Lomos, Boggs, you're our uh, Gucci defender here. Uh, what do you think I about you were that? Say like resident Catholic or something. I was like, what? Confectional. <laughs> the Gucci defender has logged on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry, I find it funny. Sorry, guys. Um, um, he calls him brother, brother Loomis as well. Does anyone notice that? Yeah. yeah. Why? yeah no. no, but he, he never gets anybody's name right. It shows how much he cares the manager. True, it, true. Where did JTE get it from? That's where he got it. That, that's, that's it. That's where he got it. He confessed, guys. He confessed. So, you know, he, he did it in a public forum in front of the world. Um, so, yeah, I'd, like, I'd love to know uh, Frankie's thoughts on, on that, uh, that promo. <clears throat> I mean, listen, it's more of the same. It's more of the same that I've been hearing. It's it's Gucci's running his mouth. Mm -hmm. You know, it's Loma's running his mouth. I, I, oh, did I watch it? Yeah, but I got sick and tired of it about halfway through because it's just it's the same old nonsense that I've been having to listen to. And, and <laughs> Chance, I'm sure you've you've had to listen to it longer than I have. So yeah. the same old the same old garbage from them. You know, I was you know, I was ready for the match. I was I was I was pumped. I was anxious uh because uh i mean both of them it seems like listen it seems like everything that gucci had to say he said it to everyone but me <laughs> and i mean i mean good on good on lomas for coming and 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 you know at least you know trying to talk to me <laughs> and addressing me but it was just the same old nonsense with these two they were they were missing they were gone no one was able to find them no one was able to talk to them until you know push came to shove and then i mean we saw what happened there you go. And then, uh, Frankie, I, I like you, man, but I have to agree, too, with Ellis. I did not like that hat, so I'm going to put on. Oh, oh. No. oh okay. <laughs> I didn't know this was going to happen. I'll be honest. I listen, 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 listen. You know, I'm a, I'm a New Yorker born and bred, you know, <laughs> and, and I, and I, I got to say this. What do you, what, you were set with a guest. Well, we'll help. We'll help. Well, Close enough, close enough. But I mean, Red Sox. Listen, I mean, there's only so so much lower you can go, you know. So, Sean keeps trying to convert me to a Yankees fan. Never gonna happen. Red it's Sox. Right. You live hey. in Miami and you're wearing a Red Sox hat, and the Yankees oh, facility boy, yeah. is oh, closing. Oh, oh, this is. Oh, oh, that, that's, that's, I will go get a Braves jersey right now. This will not turn into sports talk. Listen, right. guys. I mean, uh, we you had can... uh, Sam with a KC shirt on, so like we we're all repping our teams. Man. You can wear whatever whatever you want. It's. It, it you're going up against the Yankees, the dynasty of all dynasties, baby. It doesn't matter. Everyone is going to become uh, is going to come second to the Yankees, no matter what sport. No matter it doesn't matter. Amber Soul, you are totally right. This is not game time. Let's get back to this. <laughs> it is not game. Frankie, not round one. This was just man. I mean, yeah. How did it feel yeah. finally getting that first round one out of the way? Uh. You know, a little, uh, a little uh, anxious. I, you know, I was definitely uh, excited. You know, those first game nerves, I think, are something that, <clears throat> no matter how much you prep, no matter how much you watch, you know, it's something that you need to, you know, overcome and you need a, a hurdle. And I made some stupid mistakes in round one that, you know, I, I was kicking myself in the butt a little bit. But, um, yeah, I, I was just, I was not thinking about round one. I was just getting ready for round two. Let us wrap Ferris in the chat. Can you, can, can, can you get him out of here? Can we, can we, can we boot? Let us wrap Ferris. Make sure he's no longer. I in mean, the he's chat. repping your team right now. <laughs> I know, I know. It's all right, but Yankees it have matter. enough fans, guys. We, yeah, exactly. We've got enough. <laughs> but uh, going into this, we had Lomas coming out with seven, Frankie with five. Uh, 
you missing the uh, Amy Adams Oscar question, the wedding singer comedy question, and the Fisher King dramas using that JTE. Did you have that question, like, was it, like on the tip of your tongue, the answer for that, or was it more of a, I need some more time to search my brain for this? Uh, I use it on the uh, Fisher King, correct? Mm -hmm. Um. I, it was something on the tip of my tongue and I, I laughed about it afterward because uh, my in-laws, I've never seen Fisher King uh, and my in-laws for a couple of years now have been telling me like, watch Fisher King, watch Fisher King, watch Fisher King. So I, I went, uh, you know, right after the match, I went to them and I was like, I, yeah, I guess I have to say, you know, you were right in this situation. So I thought I was going to pull it. I wrote down patches just because, you know, Sam has told me no blank boards round one. Uh, and, you know, I just wanted to make sure I, I was sticking to, you know, the the, the head honcho's uh, direction. But um, I, I it was there and I know of the Fitch, the Fisher King. But from from the information provided, I, I wasn't going to pull it. And then Alex, I got a question for you here because you've been a Schmodown fan for a bit. Were you sad that we didn't get to hear a Meryl Streep chant in round one? Hmm. I, I don't care about the Meryl Streep chants, to be completely oh, yeah. honest. I, I don't care about that one. I don't care about the comedy. I don't care about that. I, I, I don't care about that, to be honest. Um, it's the Virtual matches um, I are very much a necessity for me. And it really, there's a lot of aspects of virtual massive uh matches that can't, you, you can't help it are just not as exciting to me and just because the in-studio match the chemistry the electricity being between the competitors and they're definitely going to do their best with the virtual matches and i am going to watch all the matches for the rest of the season but little things like that it just makes me sad <laughs> for a minute knowing that we're not gonna we, because of that getting moments like that, those chants and everything in the background, it doesn't, it's not the same in a virtual match at all. Yeah. It's less about the chant itself and more just about the kind of show of community that it represents. Yeah. I totally yeah. dig that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, Chance, I assume that you were watching, were you playing along for round one? I was, yeah. How'd you do? Didn't miss anything. We're pro. There you go. That's why. <laughs> God, that's my boy. Oh, my God. It's the only person who roots for the Steelers I root for in this world. God, I love it. <laughs> oh, man. It's so good watching you, man. It's so good. But ah. Now, let's get into uh, round two. So, Brother Lomas spins first, landing on Christopher Nolan. He ends up answering every question correctly, dropping to multiple choice once. Colin, what do you think of uh, Brother Lomas in round two? Uh, well, all I was thinking of was... Uh, Boggs, really? That was Boggs play. Uh, Boggs' favorite actor, James Stewart. Uh, that That's was Frank's run. Uh, oh, not, Frank's. Uh, yeah, yeah, this was a. Uh, the Candy was, uh, Crush in the background really threw Colin <laughs> off. I think. I think it really did. But I was looking at. Oh, he gets Nolan, and I'm thinking here. What's the new Nolan category going to be? Because this is not like uh, everything. It seems like is back on the table. It seems like we've kind of like reset the schmodown like question block and they, can they go did. back. Yeah. All right. So it just, they, anything, they, they literally did. They, they, they literally did. did. It feels like any questions. Every, everything's <laughs> all, everything's on the board now. And now outside of a handful of things, like from the first through third season, because they asked questions relating to like box office and stuff. Yeah. And they were like, right. you know what? Probably let's not ask questions about box office. Yeah. And, and also let's not ask questions like who was almost cast as the Terminator. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, okay, There's some great matches, like, though. Okay. That, yeah, where it's like, yeah, and that, that was technically the answer, but it was like, that's not relevant to the movie. <laughs> so, and and I think Mark Ellis, he it was like during a live event, and Mark Ellis was like, yeah, we regret that question. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so little little almost casting stuff like that as well, but that's it. I, I thought I thought I mean. I got to give it up because we got to go. I got to go right back to what Saul was just saying. The gameplay, the production, the uh, all of uh, all, all levels of it. This guy is getting thrown the gambit at the front. I don't think we've ever seen a player have this much on their table at the beginning of their career than brother Lomas. And he d does pretty well. 
I can't be. I mean, it's, not, it's all right. Like, I'm, I, there's nothing to be mad about. You get out of your round two, and I think he ends up with what fourteen. I can't yeah, be yeah. mad at him, but I'm also not patting him on the back either. You know, you can do better. Colin, I'm going to remember that comment after after we speak about round three because I I want to address that. But go go That's on. That's okay. Please. That's okay. No, it's fine. So, uh, Frankie, when you first spin the wheel, it lands on '80s, and we have uh, Sam making the joke. You mean the 1980s here? Uh, hmm. We're going after uh, Roka there in that moment. So I would ask, going, and this any of you can answer, is that joke ever going to get old? I, I mean, still uh, funny? Oh, no, 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 no. It, it will never, it will never get old. And it's, I mean, you know, it, it'll never. You know, I know we're on his channel, but taking shots at Roka will never get old either. No, taking shit. No, it's, it's the other thing. Like, if you can take a shot at Roka, you do it. That's yeah, it. I told him to buy whoa, 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 a whiteboard whoa. the day after his last loss, so it's fine. It's fine. Uh, it, one all of the shots are fine. One of the first meetings that we had with Sam, he said there are only there's only one acceptable wrong answer, and that's Jane Fonda. And <laughs> and I mean, you know, you 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 just he said he's like if you're if God, you that, man. like if you really know you have no idea you put it down. Uh, so I, I added that to my list of acceptable wrong answers along with um, Alphonse and Triceratosaurus tops. No, 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 Geppetto. Geppetto and the Blue Fairy are in there as well. You are, you are correct. Yeah, and you can't forget about Bespin either. You gotta uh, make oh. sure you add that. Whoa, in. whoa, soul, soul. We gotta bleep that out, Sean. <laughs> Producer Sean, you gotta bleep that out. You can't say that on this channel. That word's banned. And then, uh, Frankie, you end up splitting. I'll them. allow it, and and go Yankees. Oh yeah. my God, he put <laughs> the jersey on. This is terrible. My boy. He was waiting for a moment to be asked. He totally was. <laughs> like a goddamn vampire waiting to be invited in. So, uh, Frankie, you end up getting Jimmy Stewart. And that, again, is one of our new categories. Boggs was uh, talking about that. That's his boy there. He was excited for him to get a slice this year. Um, you did very well. You answered all your questions correctly, dropping the multiple choice twice. What was it like to have a new slice uh, in your first match? Um, I, I mean, who, who says it wasn't one that I put on there? You know, I mean, uh, it, it, it was, um, you know, I, it, the guy's a legend, you know, Jimmy Stewart's a legend. Uh, so, um, you know, again, it was just part of the preparation going into everything is I, I try to cover, cover all my bases in addition to watching stuff consistently. Um, so I felt great about that category. Uh, I felt, uh, there was really only that one John Wayne question where I just wanted to be a hundred percent sure about it. Uh, and, uh, I was really, really, I, I, I think I said this during the post-match interview with Steph Sabraz. I walked out of round two feeling way more confident than I had out of round one because of the Jimmy Stewart slice. And what we've learned again and again is that anytime it's Westerns, always guess John Wayne because it seems to be the answer every time. Yes, yes, yes. Now, uh, Chance, you are now a, a vet in this league. <laughs> and uh, you've had a bunch of matches, both where you're going into round three behind or tied or forward. Is there any difference of going into a round three that when you're behind than when you're tied or uh, ahead? Kind of like what mindset you have to go into when you go into <laughs> round three. Something to give Frankie as a rookie here some advice. Want to address that? It doesn't really matter when you throw an entire fit about how you're a fourth round pick and you win two matches in a season. So I don't care how many matches Rogue has won in his career. Those Just want to say that. <laughs> uh, second of all, yeah, uh, I think that be, it's always nice to be ahead during round. It's a different mentality when you're going into round three up than when you're on than when you're going down. It also depends how far you are down because if you're ahead, you can't you can't rest. As we as we've seen in this in this match, you, you you can't let your guard down even if you're up by like five to seven points. Yeah. Uh, but if you're ahead, you still got to be on the offensive because this dude gets and with the randomness of round three, which is what that round is known for. You can you can lose at any point in round three. So like that's, that's you can't you can't let your guard down. You can't take it easy, and you can't you got to keep a foot on the gas because you gotta gotta finish the game. Mm. Yeah. Well, and, 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 uh, Oh, sorry. Ahead, sorry. No, 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 sorry. You go. You go. I was saying, and Sam said that as well, going that round three is the round that makes the game. But, uh, Frank, what you were saying. Well, I, I was going to say, you know, it, it's <laughs> you, you often, you know, it seems like those that 
at least the people I've come across in my life. And, you know, uh, I, I, I've, I've had plenty of experiences with people like brother Lomas and, um, you know, it seems like those that have the largest, the, the, the loudest bark often have, uh, the, the, you know, frailest bite. Uh, and, um, I mean, listen, you know, he, he came through and he, you know, this guy is, we know nothing about him and it is, a genius move on his end because he surprised us all. He surprised me, man. He came out swinging. Uh, and I definitely came out around one like, Oh man, like I, I did. I, did I, was I really prepared for this guy? You know? Um, but at the end of the day, you know, he, he could, he, all he had to do, all he had to do was just keep his mouth shut a little more. And maybe he would have walked out with the W. Maybe, maybe we just focus on, you know, some answers around three questions as opposed to, you know, trying to <laughs> but what do we, what do, what do, what do you know, chance, yeah, you know, like what, what <laughs> But uh, brother, going into round three, brother Lomas did pick some biblical numbers there, mm. and kind of, they didn't work out for him this time. Um, no, they <laughs> didn't, my child. They did not. <laughs> you have uh, brother. I've never Brad, seen a movie. I've never, never seen like. nothing of this. I've lived this out my whole life. I've waited for somebody to come in here and do a good southern accent, and he crushes it. And then also we have just, I want to give a shout out to Frankie here because this was like just one of my favorite parts of the matches when you have Brother Lomas call Gucci the glorious one and then Frankie calls Sam Levine the inglorious one. I, I just got to. I mean, that's, just, that's just the law here. I mean, you know, it, 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 he he sat there and he prayed. I'm telling you, whatever whatever power he was praying to, my guy Timmy, whatever power he was praying to, he prayed to the wrong one. He prayed to the wrong one. <laughs> He's got to be like me and pray to Hephaestus. He's that's never it. let me down. Yeah, that's right. Wow. <laughs> that's wow. Damn. You guys all, you kind of, you kind of, I don't know if you've ever played God of War 3. You kind of look like Hephaestus a little bit. Oh, oh thank you. I always I get told I look more like uh, Kratos largely just because of this whole situation. So that's really, <laughs> to get anyone else from the franchise wow. is really quite nice. So thank you. For You're that. on your way. Yeah. But we do have to go into this, and I'm sorry, Frankie. Uh, I, I listen. You know, I, I wouldn't. I, <laughs> I, I what? I, at this, I, yeah, I, I am listen. You know, I, uh, <laughs> I'm ready for this one. So uh, we, you say I am robot for I robot, or as I jokingly call it, yo robot, because yo robot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And um, so I want to ask around and maybe start with Alex here. Are you surprised that Brother Lomas and Gucci didn't challenge that? And are we seeing um, rookies being afraid to challenge this year? Because so far we have had points on the board that rookies have not challenged that they could have uh, so far this year. I honestly, I don't think it's a, when it comes to rookies, I think when it comes to playing their first few matches, it's all about the learning experience and all about gaining confidence to not only make those challenges and be able to strategize effectively. I'm not surprised a rookie wouldn't make that mistake. That's common, whatever. I'm very surprised the manager didn't say something to mm -hmm. me. I, I feel like I'm like, especially like Gucci. I'm like, that's what he thinks the title of the movie is. <laughs> I mean, he probably just thought that was the actual title. I mean, yeah, listen. So, I, I mean, it, that, that, to me, that's a rookie move on behalf of a manager to not challenge that. Either both managers uh, could have, should have, would have. And that, that was very surprising to me. But Full transparency moment. in the moment. I, mm -hmm. I, I know it's iRobot, you know, and I yeah. even mentioned, you know, well, myself. My <laughs> myself and the, you know chance. Give me a give me a break. I am legend. Uh, give me a sec, legend, all right? I, 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 I get it's, I get it's not as good as I listen, listen, you're out of your element here, my friend. Let me let me talk, all right? Cobras don't live in the in the southwest, all right? They live oh, in the okay. you know elsewhere. <laughs> now listen. He lives in Arizona, that's the funniest part. I know, that's what I said. <laughs> oh, okay. You think I haven't done my research, my friend? Come on. Listen. Was it a rookie mistake on my part? A thousand percent. I mentioned it in the match. You know, the, the Boston badass page for Betty and I have been going through Will Smith a lot. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, it was there and I, I needed the, the JTE. And, it, and it, when it came to me, I was so elated uh, that I that I was able to get off the tip of my tongue. And I made a rookie mistake. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But a, it seems like the whole conversation thus far has been around my rookie mistake. And listen, I'll wear that like a Scarlet A across my yeah, chest. Baby. You don't you don't need to tell me. But what else, what else needs to happen to show you that the game has passed Gucci? 
that the game has passed the exchange. What else? See, this guy has been around for years, for years. He's been sitting there and he's been riding the coattails of Christian and the Schmodown and Ellis and every other person that he's had under his wing. And now, uh, listen, I got insider information. I don't mean to break this to you. He is a pawn. He, is a, he isn't even a member of the, the Finstock Exchange. They need to re rename that to something else because he right now, he is in the past. They are using him. Okay, everyone around is using it, and he can't see it. And the fact that he couldn't pull that and say, hmm, maybe I should challenge here, rookie rookie move for someone that's been around that long. I mean, this guy looks like he's at least 90 years old, and he can't even pull, you know, <laughs> well, I mean, like, what's going on? I, I, I you know, I, I, I just, I, and I got other stuff I'll get off my chest once we get after, you know, we're done talking about round three. But, I mean, come on. Come on. I made the mistake. I'll wear that. Like I said, I'll wear that all day, baby. And I'm going to make mistakes in the future. I've made them before, but I never make the same mistake twice. Okay. But this, but someone that's been around as long as him is going to, it's gonna, and I'm going to get the, the, the crap for it. I, I do want to clarify. I don't think he should get crap for it. I think Gucci should get crap for it. Mm. You similar to how Kate her, her one of her big mistakes that really was echoed in conversations in after show last season specifically was oh she's the one that suggested to um, Deep Thirteen that they she they should choose Festival Darlings not realizing that for a living they're literally movie critics where they do that shit <laughs> for a living and that was her one of her big mistakes of the season that people really reminded her pretty consistently on I think this is going to be her sorry gucci's moment where people are going to be like hey gucci clearly did not have his shit together clearly he was not organized and clearly he wasn't paying attention not only as a manager but uh, just as a you know uh, you know as a former as someone that's even watching the match anyone casually watching the match would have pulled that shit out real fast I yeah. ironic thing is that happened to if it happened to you if brother lumis said i am robot i was on it I was on it, and I know Sam would have been on it too. Yeah, yeah Sam, Sam would Sam would have burned the building down. Mm -hmm. exactly. um, we saw him in the Star Wars uh, tournament last year. Yeah, oh. that's pretty. Sam's not afraid to throw a challenge out there. We saw him in the Star Wars tournament last year, and I I want to reiterate what uh, Alex is saying here that it's definitely more towards Gucci, and like that was a rookie mistake mm -hmm. on Gucci's end, even though he has exactly. been in this league forever. Okay. Uh, had it again, been your shoes, the, I, had it been your shoes, I wouldn't have said. I wouldn't have said anything. I, I wouldn't have copped to it because I've had it. Right? Like yeah. That. I could have yeah, gotten it wrong, like, and it was <laughs> I mean, full transparency. I also I didn't even realize I said it. I swore on my I swore that I said at that point in time I robot. But uh, I was watching the replay afterward, and I was like, oh my god. I was like, oh my god. I mean, it's it was a joke. My six year old son was like, you know, he was like, are you still thinking about this? I'm like, I'm gonna I'm gonna think about this for weeks. <laughs> well, and that's a very not only a very rookie mistake, but that's an honest mistake. Now that you know it, you recognize it. You're able to prepare more efficiently going into your next matches. Mm. So, I mean, it's a good thing. It's honestly, it's preferable to have that kind of mistake, that kind of easy, fixable mistake in one of your first few matches. That way, going into your next ones, you're going to be so much more prepared, and that's not going to happen again. Yeah, I mean, it's your don't tell Peter, but you ended up winning. Oh, oh, oh yeah, you're we will get that. Moment, your first match. <laughs> and uh, but I will say this, and and I think you know, I I would be interested to hear if Chance will you know agree with me, but um, in at least in my experience, in my only one match, and I've only had one match, but in in my other you know my history of competition, you leave a little bit of yourself in every single game match, you know, w w whatever it may have be and whatever thing you're competitive in. So the person that you're going to see for my next match, whenever that may be, is not going to be that first person is not going to be the first animal. And you best believe that if something like that happens again, then I'm going to have to take a big step backward and I'm going to have to reevaluate how I'm approaching the game in order to get better. Because uh, if there's one thing I do is I do not make the same mistake twice. Tell you what, if, if, I, if I was if I was in your faction, I was training. I'd be be beating you with eye questions every single day. Oh, I, I I've been sp I've just been speaking I comma and whatever for the last day and a half. So uh, I'm with you on that one. I, I, I would be, I would be beating you in training until you would never oh. make that mistake again. And you can't forget the not just I uh, titles, but also words with the before of it. The mm. surgery. 
versus surrogates. Yeah. Little things like that is going to kill you. The surrogates. There's a difference. Yeah. <laughs> articles and wordy titles are going to be like the death of a lot of people. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm, I, mm -hmm. I'm on it. Don't worry about it. And then after that, I don't know why I'm saying you better be because you're not like that. Benefit me if you are. <laughs> oh, you what you're doing. Chance, I appreciate the support, and I will let everyone know that you are supporting me a hundred thousand percent. There you go. Sure. Right. <laughs> but going you're on, back, you're, on, you're to, on a show I like. I'll, 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 I'll take that. <laughs> going back uh, to uh, round three, then you missed your three pointer there. Yeah. And uh, but you were able to get your five. And were you thinking like? Oh no! This is it. He's gonna come in, get his two and three, and that's it. I'm losing this match. What were your uh, What was your mindset at that moment? I'll let you know when when Lomas's downfall began. It was when, by the grace of God, I got a question about a Chris Farley movie. Okay, I've said it. Uh, anyone that knows me knows that I am a massive that's it. That's SNL it. fan. Uh, and a, a massive Chris Farley fan. I've said it before. I say it again. He's my favorite cast member of all time. So when I got that, I knew in my head, like, oh man, his, his rhetoric that he's been spitting his prayers, they were for me. So I just sat back and, and of course there was a little bit, I mean, that two pointer came out. I was like, oh man, you know, I thought that was, I thought that was a bit of a layup. I mean, brother Lomas was answering harder questions around two. I was like, okay, didn't get, it. I was like, all right, all right. He's got his three. Let's see what happens there. And I was like, oh, wow, okay, all right, okay. And that five came out, and I saw I saw the sweat in his brow, baby. I saw him start to tremble a little bit, and I just went. I leaned back, just like I did before when Saul was in here. I leaned back, and I enjoyed the show. And then you have Brother Lomas, Fat Goose Egg in round three after doing really well in round one and two. And we have the winner here. Frankie Alvarez. The, the, the irony of that is, as much as John Roker calls De a Joker, I've never seen De Milanda do that. I've never mm. seen him go around mm. three with everything. And then Damn. I do want to make a note here, too, about Sam. I think he did such great management in like all three of his matches that he's had this year so far, but especially in this one, just going into round three. Was it four? Four matches, sorry. <laughs> three and no? Three and no? no, it is three and oh, yeah. Three and oh, three wow. and oh. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa, look at that. Yeah, uh, d definitely a different year this year than uh, last year. John, last year you weren't Sam's biggest fan, but you're kind of turning around this year. Like, How, how do you think uh, Sam's management style for this match and so far this year? Oh, it's been good. I mean, uh, yeah, I was very uh, rude and disrespectful to Mr. Levine, and this is an instance wherein I must eat the alphabet soup he's given me so that I can eat my words. Okay, you, That's you what the situation to, is. You don't got to eat your words yet, Bar. That's three three matches. They've won three games out of a year-long season. I mean, that's true, but especially if you look at his overall win record last year, still three wins in a row is still looking pretty good and more polished than last year at the very least, I would say, you know? Like, I still think about the Sam Levine from last year, and yeah, I just think about him in that Star Wars match that you mentioned, Sol. You know, just kind of like tossing out challenges left and right just because that's the way he thinks he can get a foot in for that match. It wasn't good. This year, it feels like he's a lot more in tune with all of his players like Frankie here, like Marie, like Amaru, it feels like he knows a lot more about them. He's more invested in everybody. I've been really impressed with him. And then, uh, what, what are you thinking, Alex? Hold on. I got to know. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what I should say and shouldn't say. <laughs> say whatever Fair. you um, want to say. Fair. No, I mean, just because, I mean, like behind the scenes, um, every manager is different and their interactions. Some, some managers, are much more hands-on and some are much more hands-off and and when it comes to being a manager i don't think having a having a few wins really means anything for a manager honestly what really turns me as a manager i mean for a manager to make me think okay this is a manager with some serious gumption with some actual leadership and management skills is when challenges come up, like that's one, or when situations come up when your competitor is looks like they're freaking out, such as Snyder when he went up against Dan Merle, and you, you see Roxy like being like, "Get your shit together." 
you are so much better than this and you're not allowing yourself to be that's when really good managers are really coming out and we haven't really had any moments from sam levine to really dictate that yet as far as i've heard i know he's a very hands-off manager he kind of puts off a lot of those um like training sessions and everything to some other competitors to really kind of lead on that things may change who knows and so a few wins, I'm like, that's great. Um, but I really want to see him in a situation where we see more of those management skills put to the test. Frankie, what would you like to say to that? I, I, like Again, that, that was from last season. I really want to be proven wrong, but I just really want to see hey, him in action. And listen, I, I get it. I, I, I can't speak for... <clears throat> season seven, you know, I can only speak for, for the man, uh, Sam Levine, uh, the inglorious one that I, that I have interact with and been lucky to be interact with. Um, I will say this, the game is evolving and I've said this in, in, in a lot of different ways is the game is evolving. The players are evolving. And with that, the managers are evolving. And if the ways that we have seen that have been quite successful in the past, uh, if you think those are not going to evolve too, you're nuts. Sam is a manager of the future. I think Sam, uh, look, us, us East Coasters, we're smart. We're not dumb. You know, I'm not saying anyone else around. I mean, what, John, you're from the East Coast, right? I'm right. Yeah. I'm okay. Fake. So two, two for three. We're okay right now. But, oh! uh, <laughs> uh, he, he knows we have something with him that nobody else has. And he is figuring out how to tap into that. We have a former champion we got a former singles champion we got a former two uh, uh tag team uh, tag teams uh, excuse me um teams champion sounds better yeah i know uh and he's using that experience to assist us and that's something that is going to consistently show in the play and and i have the utmost confidence in all of our faction mates and all of my teammates uh and i do think that we are going to surprise people listen you guys are 100 percent right three wins in an early, early young season doesn't mean a whole lot. So what I'm just going to tell you to do is just sit back and as Christian said, enjoy the show because there's a lot more coming. It's uh, let's also co not compare the amount of manager uh, champions you have in your faction or as a manager, just because literally corruption has like three, three. Champions. Oh, I didn't, I didn't speak about the entirety. I mean, listen, <laughs> so corruption. I, I, no, I, but but there's a difference when it comes to the manager, and I get it. Corruption has a lot of experience, you know, a lot of experience, and, and the dungeon has a lot of experience too. Mm -hmm. But it's different when you have the person from the top that also has the same experience as the players. You get something that you don't necessarily get when it's just the players that are trying to focus on themselves. When you have that coach that is able to say, you know, uh, oh, you, I mean, I'm a big baseball fan and, and we've seen a lot of, you know, sometimes the best players don't make the best coaches, but I honestly believe moving forward, we are going to see more of these uh, players turned, you know, managers eventually are going to start to make a bigger impact. And Sam is going to start that this year. Wait, sorry, Alex, what was that? I couldn't hear you. What? It's fine. It was, it, was, it, was, it was nothing. It was nothing. And then, uh, in the post-match interview with Gucci, he said, in his eyes, Brother Lomas won. Colin, <laughs> does uh, Finstock need glasses? Stop the steal. <laughs> I would say that Brother Gucci needs to take another trip to the prayer booth. And he needs to con confect evict himself, whatever he said, one more time. And uh, I don't, I don't know what this guy's doing this year. It's yet to be seen. I really got to see what Roka can pull out. I got to see what the Barbarian can pull out because they really do have some bangers hiding out in the exchange. But right now, that's not what's being touted out in front of the world. Right now, it's this new show. So we're gonna have to see. I mean, yeah, like I said, it was it was through two rounds, and I was feeling all right about Lomas, but yeah, we get to round three and obviously round three, it's like the old golf saying you drive for show, but you putt for dough and couldn't get his putts down. Couldn't sink him. And that's, I think Gucci's going to take a look at that. And I don't know if this Loomis, uh, perform Lomas Loomis performance is indicative of what we're going to see from him for the rest of the season. But I think he, he knows what he needs to work on. So I think that's better than most people can say when it's coming out of their first match. 
Listen, guys, I, I hate to do this, but I, I do need to get out of here. So I, I want to make sure, you know, I, I, I leave you guys with this. Um, first of all, Chance, I know I won't be here for the coverage of your match. Congratulations on your match. Hard fought victory. You deserve to take a victory lap. Um, it, it's it's so funny that you say that, it, you know, Gucci says, in my eyes, this is a victory. Because guess what? It's not just his eyes. All I have heard after this match besides the iRobot stuff, which is funny, I, I admit, is all about Lomas. And he lost. He lost the match. Everyone's saying, well, he's here to stay. Boy, he did great. But guess what? He didn't do, he didn't do well enough to beat me. So it's time that I get some of the respect that I deserve in this, in this league. Because guess what? At the end, at the end of that first match, it was very early. Oh, my God, it's a young season. It was my first match, too. I sit there, and I'll wear that, like I said, I'll wear that like a proud badge of honor. But guess what? He didn't walk away with the win. I walked away with the win. So everyone that's sitting there, all these after shows that are getting nice and cute and talking about, wow, man, oh, I have heard none of them talk about the fact that I'm the winner in this match. So if I don't start getting the respect that I deserve, I'm going to have to start doing something a little more dangerous in this league. Because guess what? Everyone was so excited for Brother Lomas, and he came out, and when he went up against the animal, just like you said, Saul, goose egg. Goose egg. As a, as a good friend of mine once said, a story of New York's own, you know, the animal is here. I was put in a vat of cream, <laughs> me and Loomis. And guess what? I kept struggling and struggling and struggling. And I turned and I walked my ass out of that thing once it was butter. And Loomis is at the bottom of that vat. All I want to know, Christian, if you're watching, whoever else is watching, who's next? Because I'm hungry. And if you don't put someone in front of my way, I'm going to have to find them first. Guys, thank you for having me on your show. Hopefully I start getting the respect. I appreciate you guys here. I'll see you soon. We respect you here, man. That was great. <laughs> but, uh, there we go. Uh, Colin, take it away. Gotta love that dedication from Frankie. And, uh, he had me crack it up. I, that, he, he buttered us up the whole way. I, I I don't know what else you want from a guy coming out of his first match. I mean, it, that's the kind of attitude you want to have. When everything, when, when you can have stuff go against you in your match, yet you still continue to see the positives. He acknowledges the negatives. That's a lot more than most people do when they're coming out of their first match. So, gotta give it up to him. But let's transition into that Friday headline match. What else do you want to talk about? We got the man himself, Chance, the Cobra Ellison, going up against the kid. Y'all seen the rest talk about the best. Exactly. Ooh. That we we know. You know, you know how we feel about you, Chance. You, you've been our boy for for a long time. There were very few after shows that picked you to win the IG tournament. This man above me and myself did both. Pick, um, man, you're our boy. Uh, okay, Alex. Listen, I said very no, few. Didn't. I no, said few. Didn't, I didn't say no, no others. No, no chance. I actually, I'll, I'll go back and find the thing where I actually said on. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna tell you all. Yeah, we're doing our reactions, and I was the only one in all C2A. To say chance, but see, I digress. This is a and safe I think space. my message to and I and we actually chat about it later that day when we did like a when we did like a little a blue jeans hangout. And I was like, Yeah, and I was like, Oh, I, 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 I knew it, I knew it. And I and you're like, Yeah, I think I picked Bruce Green to win that tournament, and that was definitely a bad move on my end. I definitely, yeah, don't, I definitely don't, 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 pin don't pin at your hopes on Bruce Green. What can I say? I love his Twitch. Funny guy. <laughs> the Boggs, guy. this is our boy. This is your match, sir. Take it away. We're about to have some fun, okay? <laughs> so, uh, oh, the, he's back. You know, he's back. He's made it, made his stamp in the singles division. Finally. Thank you very much. And everyone, just to remind you, you know, obviously, like the video, of course, uh, get in your uh, stream labs and super chats for a chance as well. We are going to get some uh, Patreon callers in towards the end of this for questions for Alex as well. Uh, so just want to remind people of that. But first of all, 
we're going to start with keeping up with the Kalinowskis uh, at the start with the with the promo. That was the best promo of the week. Did for you me. just come up with that yourself? I, I did. did. Yes. Yeah, did you like that's that? That's yeah. fantastic. Even though she's not a Kalinowski. But, oh, you know. that's beautiful. That's yeah. fantastic. Uh, but no, this is my favorite. I think Mike actually shows like he's he's the best actor in the kind of well in the week anyway to cut a promo like he actually shows different emotions in the thing you know in the in the promo where you know um i don't know he's just having fun one minute then he's trying to calm it down and shannon's flipping and i enjoyed it you know uh chance what do you think of the the um you know your, your teammates doing the promo I, I i didn't know about that scene until i saw the match actually i was like i called him last night i'm like you know what that was that was fucking that was excellent <laughs> you, guys, you guys are great I want, to see, I want to see more of the uh, workings of the Baranowski household in the future. Oh, oh do I get to make a cameo? <laughs> <laughs> I love Wonder. the uh, I love the slight Ferris Bueller reference as well when Mike finally cuts at the end and realizes what she's talking about and says, "What would I do?" And he gives the principal grace, and it's so good. It's so good. That's good. I do love that movie. So I did. I'm glad you picked that up on that. Exactly. Uh, Alex, what, what do you think of the uh, keeping up with the uh, Bark Kalinowskis? Well, I tweeted my reaction essentially on uh, regarding that scene, and I was like, it was Grace Hancock all along. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think it was a pretty fantastic scene. It was really quick. I, I, I bust a gut the entire time. It was so great. And uh, I am so happy that the, the lollipop is here to stay. <laughs> I'm so glad. I, I got to go get a bag of those at some point. Yeah, it's, it's so good. Um, but I, I was actually really excited to see get some acting some acting done from some Shannon. Shannon obviously is an actress as well as a medical professional, obviously, as I believe a nurse. And... Um, uh, which is amazing. Um, but we don't really get a chance to see her in many scenes outside of like pre and post interviews. So her doing a scene like this, I was like ecstatic because I, I feel like we get that significantly more with Mike, but Shannon is most of the man. Thoughts on uh, the primary? Uh, well, not even the primary, the cutscene. So, yeah, I absolutely loved it. Just the two of them were so good in it. And uh, again, going off of what Alex said, to see Shannon do some acting because she has she's an actress as long as well as a nurse. And two, the fact that just Mike and his look there and him going, Grace, and that moment was just like the best moment ever. And thinking too in my head, watching it, I was like, what if Shannon and Grace were to ever in the future team up that would be dangerous for christian harloff christian would not know what to do with himself it was nice that they'd done it together as well because normally i think uh, i believe that he he mentions that he, shannon kicks him out for the promos and cut and cut scenes and stuff so it was nice to see him together doing one uh but john yeah what are your thoughts on the uh, on that scene before we get into the match yeah, I mean, not much else to say on it. Everyone around the horn did a pretty good job. It was a lovely little scene that gave us a nice little intro into this match. Let me on the show. I can be like the kooky neighbor that just winds up like, oh, what's up? Oh, no. Do you guys need someone to commentate on a match? And I'll just do that. I can act. I, guess, I can yeah. act. That wasn't good acting I just did, but I can do it later. <laughs> okay, so going into <laughs> okay. the... <laughs> Getting into the match then. Obviously, uh, you know, tough, tough promo uh, cut by No Chronic as well. Tough music because uh, it's a big match. You know, this for me, this is my most anticipated match in the kind of first uh, wave of uh, announcements. It was because it's 50 50. You know, two young guys, two um, people, you know, uh, two belt holders last year. So I was super excited for it. Obviously, chance uh, at the end of round one, you're going 7 6 up. Uh, obviously, missed a couple there. Well, no, I'm, I'm, I'm 7 6 down. Uh, sorry, yeah. I got that wrong. Yeah, seven six down, missing the. Uh, for me, it was the killer, the uh, Richard Pryor, Bruce's Millions one, uh, and obviously the uh, the the Tom Hanks uh, release date for uh, the two thousand and four question. So yeah, what are your overall thoughts on your on the first round? The other thing is, I know about I know how Bruce's Millions end. I've never seen the movie, but I know how that movie oh, okay, ends. Okay. Mike's Mike knows that answer. He's gotten like that instilled in me, but that's one more. Just like I wasn't super familiar with the movie i don't know i don't know what i was thinking of but like there's i think it's okay chris probably made it sound like a very similar title right that's probably one of like the last ones he did but like that's what that's what came to my head i don't i knew that i knew that wasn't right but i had nothing else and yeah i mean 
if this is a situation I haven't been in a long time, where like I'm down mm-hmm. going into the next round. And so like, it's just like, at, the, at that point, I know I got to pick it up. Yeah, because I know, obviously, I think the last, so you're technically your last match was a title match, right? Against Chandru. Um, yeah. You know, kind of pre earlier on in last year, you were kind of going perfect and getting really high rounds. And obviously in Chandru match, I think you only got five in the first round. Uh, yeah. This match was six. I was like, oh no, is he kind of, is he got a thing now in the first round? But uh, look, you got, as you said, the match doesn't end after the first round. But Alex, please, uh, your overall thoughts on the first round. I mean, I thought it was a very solid first round. When I played along, I got six questions correct. Um, I mean, like, um, there are sometimes there are matches where you watch a match and you're like, these are pretty easy, but that's the mm. point. It's supposed to be. But sometimes you, uh, but sometimes you also get also get other matches where you're like, this is actually kind of low key to a lot of two pointers. <laughs> sometimes that kind of happens along. Um, mm. But uh, I, I thought it was actually a, I mean, pretty simple first round, pretty easy to go. Honestly, nothing crazy. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. True, true. Uh, so, any thoughts first round? Uh, how kind of, obviously, Chance was down. Any overall thoughts? It was pretty even in the first round between both Chance and um, Brennan. And I know, to that killer of Brennan saying that, like, he was getting in his head more. As you could see that where you have uh, Chance throughout the whole time just being calm, cool, collective, just taking the hits the way it he does and then you have Brennan like oh man I got I had that one oh that was and it was just like that moment I was like don't get in your head Brennan I didn't pick you to win this but don't get in your head man because you're still a lot of the match to go forward and so you could see that just between the two different competitors that even though their scores were close to each other you had one calm cool collected one getting in their head yeah we saw the the early signs of it at the end of this round like Koi's yeah. giving him a pep talk already even though he's winning um yeah i definitely definitely saw that um but yeah john what are your overall thoughts on Koi's pep talk and on shannon's uh with with uh, uh chances as well and the overall first round yeah i mean and this kind of gets back to something that alex was talking about earlier and was right on the money with is a big key part of a manager is looking at how they handle players who are getting kind of frazzled and in this match, uh, I, I, I saw a side of Brendan uh, that I've kind of seen before, but I haven't necessarily commented on as strongly as I have with, let's say, Jeff Snyder. But Brendan can get frazzled kind of quickly, like after certain misses, if it's like one that he does feel like he could have pulled, like you really can start to see it affect him and like really get inside his head. Like the dude can start beating himself up and stop focusing on the match, like, kind of quickly like you see him get pulled out of his head and i think koi uh he's a lovely guy i'm certainly not gonna besmirch the guy but i don't think he's able to kind of get into brendan's head and like heart the same way that say roxy can with jeff like you see the way roxy kind of knows both the things that jeff needs to hear in that moment and then also the ways to kind of get him back on the rails where i think koi is more just like Hey, dude, what's up? You're super cool. Don't worry about it. Let's just keep going, baby. Let's just keep running. And, like, that's delightful, and we like to see it, but it doesn't always help your competitor focus on the match at hand. No, it doesn't. Um, yeah, I mean, it's funny. that I think it's worked before, uh, previous to this match, like Coy's pep talks with the kid and maybe with Babes together. Maybe, but, uh, yeah, I do understand this kind of time. It didn't work. It was a bit uh, – it did stand out, definitely. Uh, but going into round two um, – you know, obviously, Chance goes first. He always goes first, right? Uh, and then, I think, I think he, oh, sorry, don't know. Sorry, no, yeah, no, sorry. Uh, Brendan went first. Yeah. Oh uh, no, that's what I meant. I was a bit shocked that you didn't go first. But uh, yeah, he gets his Chicago question. He gets the Afonso uh, yeah, you right question. Oh, you right. I, I went first, but they, they went gave first, it. but he didn't choose it. Yeah. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, my notes. Yeah. Brendan should have known not to let Chance go first. There we the go. Banger. That's what I meant. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then obviously he's missed the. Sylvester Stallone question, which uh, which character was nominated for the second time playing the question? Obviously, you missed it as well, Chance. Interesting to know your thoughts. Was it a case of not needing more time? The 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 kind of way the question was written because really good question, obviously. So yeah, what was your kind of thought process in that? Yeah, no, that's a five because like when we said we said Blanchett and miss it, I'm just like okay, so it's got to be someone more recent than that. So I'm like trying mm-hmm. to go through every nominee of the last like ten like ten yeah. ish years. And it's a lot to go through within 15 seconds, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna waste a repeat on this. I don't like to waste repeats. Mm-hmm. I'm especially mm-hmm. not gonna do it on a steal. I would mm-hmm. rather just burn the points. So okay. yeah, that was the whole thing. 
like if, I, that, if that's multiple choice i would have got that for sure because like i'm like oh yeah it's the loan mm. but he didn't get it. and the, the important thing is like he didn't get it that's sure. my, that was my whole thought process during that question i thought because it's a steal i thought you were going to do it i thought you're going to use a repeat because you know it was a chance to steal and it went perfect for us but i actually yeah. think it was honestly a good strat strategy for him to not go to multiple choice honestly because if he had no clue had no clue whatsoever and he's pretty confident that chance isn't isn't i mean because obviously he knows that you're confident in oscars but he knows also that that is a crazy weird and hard question as well um to kind of wrap your mind about within the last few seconds so honestly i think it was actually a really good strategy to not go multiple choice yeah uh colin what are your thoughts then so the kids uh you know is, is round two the question uh yeah just give me your overall thoughts yeah i think it's a, a it's a chance for him to take the moment and unfortunately it's 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 what kind of goes back to what john said is his it the kid's sentiment out of round two is that he couldn't shake the loss in round one just a little bit in round one carries over to round two he can't shake it in round two he's still carrying it over to the conversation with koi and it just seems that he he doesn't feel comfortable chance i'm gonna sit here man i'm gonna give you your props because you're a boy you're you are in the zone i've been playing a bunch of madden lately you get in the zone with a character in madden like the quarterback can't throw an interception if he's in the zone you're in the zone you find that pretty quickly more so than other players and what makes you great compared compared to not necessarily just to brendan in general but to every other player is that you can't fall out of it what John was saying, what I'm noticing as well, is that Brendan falls out of it quickly, just as quickly as he can get on fire. And we've seen him on fire in championship matches, specifically in the team's division. The singles matches, when it's all on him, I say singles division is close to tennis. The only person who can make a mistake up here is you. And you blame it all on yourself. And I know singles competitors do that. All on the, It's all on you. The only person who messes up is you. But you were able to carry yourself to Smash Man. And that was the way I saw you carry yourself in round two. You didn't let the mistake. It, it, it wasn't even a mistake. You didn't even classify it in your brain as not getting the steal as a mistake where other competitors have that possibility. So that's kind of my takeaway of round two was how each player handled the moment differently. Yeah, and obviously Chance is around as well. I don't know if my notes were wrong. That's why I read it wrong. But uh, yeah, obviously Chance sticking on planet of the apes i want to know, first of all did you put out on the wheel chance <laughs> i did yeah yeah there we go i knew it <laughs> knew it uh yeah of course why not you know so obviously new ig slice clearly you're studying it went perfect in it uh you know as you know as shannon said you know it's going to be surface level questions which it was she gave you the good pep talk get get your get you out of your own head obviously a couple of missed questions so yeah what are your kind of thoughts on your round but smart play and you know you, you got your you got your slice I mean, surface, surface ish. I mean, there's that one quote that I had to think about the this. fifth one. I nearly, As, yeah, I, I, nearly, I nearly said the original because I like the original of the remake and when I don't remember that line, the original. So, yeah, and I think it's the thing that like I can I can get players who are across division. They have an advantage in singles because like you have like especially with all these new categories, like you have all these like weird like new slices that you mm -hmm. can play in singles now. So it's just like if you have it, why not do it? Because like those slices will trip a lot of players up, like Planet of the Apes. Like, because I, fe I felt like they might see an integration slice coming, but they might not think I, I play a new slice. So I was, willing to, I was willing to take that gamble with Planet of the Apes. And yeah, it, pay it paid off. I, ne I, need I knew I needed a big swing in round two because, I, because of the way round one went, and I ended up getting it. Yeah, because you were like, yeah, we're taking it, and Chan is like, whoa, whoa, let's let's just <laughs> let's just at least style it out, you know, at least. Um, but yeah, what about you, Sol? What's your uh, kind of overall thoughts on round two? Chance going perfect, you know, uh, Maya going nearly perfect, missing the one. Uh, but yeah, what are your thoughts? I think too, going on to the fact that Brennan was just not in his head. It wasn't in his head once he started missing questions in round one. It wasn't in his head for uh, round two. Chance calm, cool, collected the entire time. He knew his answers, and then when that steal opportunity came up, he just, I love the way you answered that too. You were just like, I don't know. And I was just like, that, that's how you do it. You just keep going forward. And 
that probably was like my favorite moment of yours through the whole match. It's just you just going, I don't know. <laughs> like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna waste, I'm not gonna waste effort. Like the important thing is he missed it. Correct, mm -hmm. correct. Uh, John, yeah, any final thoughts? And uh, yeah, what do you, do you do? You think that Maya was rattled at all, or uh, yeah? Yeah, I mean, I've been reading a little bit of these uh, comments going through as well because I, I, I think I might have kicked a little bit of a bee's nest. I see some disagreement here about whether or not Brendan is somebody who gets frazzled. Uh, I think Josh Mar Mabry here brings up a great point. There are two kinds of frazzled. Uh, the kid being super energetic and Snyder going full tilt. I think that's completely fair. Yeah. And then I also agree, though, with I think it was, uh, yes, it was Canada Rock's friend of the show. His comment, actually, Bibbs is really good at calming the kid down. It's mm -hmm. why they are such a great team. Again, kind of cutting to what Colin was saying. I think Bibbs and the kid kind of get each other more on that kind of spiritual level that I was talking about. Uh, than Brendan and Quay do necessarily. I think, you know, Brendan talked about how since he stepped in the game, really, with his debut match against soon-to-be rookie phenom Paul Oyama, he's been playing these high-profile matches basically since the beginning. So he knows that sometimes when he's got that one miss, that is the match. The thing is, he sometimes shows his hand in that regard and will sometimes kind of get to that point where he immediately is starting to play it in his head. I know I do it too. Sometimes when I have like a setback at work, I start going like, great. Well, there's the whole day. That's the thing that's going to get me fired. And it's like, no, it's never that serious, but sometimes you can't help but get into that spot in your head where you just start to freak out. You get a little self-conscious. I don't hold it against him personally, of course, by any stretch of the means, but this is just one of those instances where you could see in Brendan's eyes that he was just kind of already losing the match in his mind a little bit. You know, it's like that Doctor Strange thing where he kind of started playing out all the outcomes in his head and he was just seeing those losses, not that one win. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it was a bit, I don't know. I, d I think it's, uh, that Josh is right in the chat there where it is two things there where um, but like how the thing is like you've been playing for how long and uh, you know your manager has to give you a pep talk every round a little bit concerning but obviously going into because you just think um, obviously it may not have because it can affect you kind of, you know, trying to pull the answer, right? The more nervous you are, the kind of more repeats you might use, that kind of thing. So it's a bit concerning going into round three. Uh, and then, yeah, we get into round three where uh, obviously he hits his two-pointer, the Clint Eastwood question about the mule, Chance hits his poor Rudd question. Then he misses another Rocky question. The uh, It was, I find it really hard though. Um, that's, how that, many... that's, that's, that's being Canadian is a disadvantage from there. <laughs> <laughs> how many... Uh, uh, Rocky movies released in the 80s. Obviously, it was two. I think he said three. Uh, and then Chance got his midnight special question. Then it went back to Maya to his five, which he did. The gold member, Gwyneth Parter question. And Chance knocked it out of the park with Antonio Banderas in Interview with the Vampire. So, yeah, um, Alex, we'll go with you. Uh, overall thoughts on round three. Uh, and, yeah, um, on the events on that. The interview with the vampire question is one of the easiest five pointers I've ever heard in my entire life, but I, it's all subjective. I get it. Um, um, I didn't know. Yeah, every question is um, easy. You don't know the answer. It's, yeah. Exactly. It's all subjective. That's what I had to like remind myself when it comes to these. Um, yeah, we should we should stress that probably yeah, for no yeah. reason whatsoever. <laughs> Can we put that in the intro? <laughs> Remember, like, the yeah. ultimate Schmodown show is not related to the Skybound. It should also be all questions are subjective. All questions are subjective. It's it's like I didn't expect the Florence Pugh question to be low key a five pointer from a few matches ago. Like how is that the question everyone's freaking out about? Anyway, um, but yeah, I felt like it was a very interesting match uh, to kind of go through. Obviously, Chance you shined, you did fantastic, and I also think Cannon she did really great managing you um, in the match as well. Um, Koi. Um, Koi managed him kind of interesting to me, and especially in particular the third round. Um, Brendan almost reminds me of um, Bibbs before he learned to calm down. <laughs> um, before Bibbs learned to have fun with Shimoto, he was he, he when he was good he was great when he was when he got in his head he really had a hard time with it and that's what brendan reminds me of and i'm referring to the body language as well because yeah, also brendan, great call Bren, yeah brendan he before even start of the match he didn't seem fully himself um now i'm not saying going into the match before he even start playing he was going to lose or anything obviously he had his mindset i'm, I'm just gonna be shit today but i'm sure he it, it looks like by his body language 
he he didn't seem all there from the get go. And by the time round three kind of rolled around, he you, you're kind of chipping away at him bit by bit. And I think the rock, knowing the Rocky questions, really, he's just like this is just an entire. And he at that point, he's probably thinking to himself, these questions like this movie franchise is just completely out to get me with Rocky Stallone. Who the fuck cares about Stallone? <laughs> My yeah, maybe. But another conversation for another day. But overall, I mean, yeah, I thought it was it was really interesting to kind of watch the personalities more so than the actual match themselves. If that makes sense. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, Yankees mm-hmm. fan too. I'm a Yankees fan. Yes. Ah, oh, sad day, sad day. <laughs> I, I still love you, but sad day. <laughs> That's a great day. <laughs> Where's he keep coming from? How's he gonna keep? Is he gonna keep doing that? Do we think? I think he's gonna keep when he's doing a young kid. Baseball is, season's yeah. going on. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Shannon, Shannon made an interesting point as well in the post-match interview. She he hit his spinner's choice and he still lost. Um, you know, it was the rocky questions. I guess you are right there, Alex, hundred uh, percent. But yeah, so overall thoughts on the round. Any questions for Chance? Uh, whilst we summarize the match. I was just happy to see Antonio Banderas like in the f- f- final round. Like just anytime, mm-hmm. more Hispanics, more Latinos. I want those questions in. So that's just my take on that part. I do think, yeah, Rocky, Rocky is uh, <laughs> Brendan's kryptonite, and he needs to go watch those movies, have a session where he's watching them in a row, figure out what he has to do with that. Uh, but it was a great match, Chance. You did great. <laughs> Do you, say, do you say who cares about Rocky, uh, Alex? Think about it. I don't fucking care about Rocky. No, nah, what? Oh I do. Ch- <laughs> Chances, you know, oh, his. No, I just want to let everybody on the outline Asia know that uh, Alex's <laughs> views do not represent everybody's on the screen. No, I, mean, so um, I, I apply that. I kind of apply that mindset when it comes to any. Like, I know a lot of people feel that way about Studio Ghibli movies, and I'll be like. <gasps> How dare you say the best studio Ghibli? Right. Anything studio Ghibli, but I mean, True. like everyone. I mean, like I've only thing is I've only seen the first one. I didn't care for it. That's fine. But people, like I know for a lot of people, I like, grew up watching it. Creed, other son movies. Creed, I, I thought was fine. There's, um, there's, there's. Um, it, but I mean, like it, it's just it's it's not a movie for me, and I recognize sure. that, and that's totally fine. But I'm glad people love the franchise. I'm glad you can say that. That's better than most people could say about things. They yeah, I'm excited for, for people to love, love something that. about it. Yeah. You know? There's seven. There's seven good movies in that franchise. I'll check yourself. Yeah. Uh, there you go. I, there you go. Did you did you know his uh three point? I, I didn't know. I didn't know. The three three three. Off, yeah. Only seen two of them. <laughs> and you saw but, two of the great ones. Chance question for you is that I don't know where the narrative of you can't answer a five pointer comes from. Like if you just watch your team's matches, you know that a lot of the times it's you are the one who are pulling those five pointers. So is it nice to like have a match where you can be like, oh, let's uh, stop that narrative. Let's just go forward. I can answer a five. It's nice to win. It's nice to win that way because every I've lost every match by by whipping the five. Every single match I've lost, I lost by whipping the five. But I just like I just could be anything I just don't know about like, jo- like Johnny Sway I think is still maybe the hardest five pointer ever asked. So I will so I will take this correction. Um, I mean look he he has he has Rocky does not fight communism out of those movies. So four is awesome. <laughs> Even though four is terrible. They're all, four awesome. Is They're all awesome fact. Uh, but John, any final Except thoughts five. on? Uh, even some bits of that, you know, I, I do kind of like got a soft spot for it. But uh, John, any final thoughts of you know of the match? Any question for Chance? Number one, you cannot call a franchise with a robot butler bad. You simply can't do it. I won't hear of it. That's cinematic genius, and the fact that every franchise doesn't have a robot butler is absurd. Marvel learned their lesson. Why do you think Vision got added in? It's not because of the comics. It's because of Rocky Balboa setting the precedent for Chris robot Chubbuck. butler. Robot butler. <laughs> get get ready for friggin' Wanda Rocky's robot butler coming to Disney Plus in 2035. All right. But one thing I wanted to ask about, less to do with the match, but more about as Dennis Reynolds, another Philadelphia hero, would say, the wow. implications. Because what we've heard apparently is we didn't know about until this match, but the winner of this match, which is to say you chance, 
are apparently going to be playing the winner of the Paulo Yama and William the Beast Bibiani match. So I wanted to talk, you got to talk a little bit about it in that post-match interview, but now, especially that you've had a little time getting ready to watch that match and start preparing for it, what are you feeling about it right now? I mean, I don't know if it's official yet. Like, I'm going with my mind that's official. I haven't, like, confirmed, like, hey, you get the winner of whoever of this match next week. Um, but, yeah, looking at, you know, now they know what's ahead of me, I can I can be ready. And I, I said in the match, like, this doesn't stop for me until I get to that belt. And whatever I got to take out to do it, I'm going to take them out. If it happens to be Bibbs or Paul, it's Bibbs or Paul. There you go. Colin, final thoughts on the match? Uh, for uh, and any questions for chance before we get the kind of Discord questions in and the patrons in. Nah, man, this is just this is just return to form. My girlfriend can uh, she can she can confirm before the beginning of round three. I wrote down on the whiteboard, Chance will hit his five, knowing the weight that that sentence carries in. <laughs> to, to, to your prior singles experiences i knew what that carried and i knew the confidence you had going into that round man and i i could just feel it that this was the time where any person who had a doubt this was the time to take that doubt get it the f out of here because it's time to play last year it was chancy three belts we started it here in june i'm i just want to i just want another one around the waist let's just get one just 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 one just the sights on one. I don't care which one it is, and I know. We start, we start with one. We build from there. Exactly. Exactly. We start from here. We build out. We worry about what's – you worry about your house first, and then you build out from there. I think you got to come in this year. You're starting off this year right. Definitely on the right foot. I do love uh, the, the shots taken by the managers as well in the post-match. Um, you know, I think some sly shots there from uh, from Coy. Uh, but as well, obviously, we had a, we had a post-cut scene as well with oh. – um, with Chandra and Ace, of course, uh, Chandra <laughs> trying to recruit everyone one by one. Ace obviously stood up to him uh, as being. You I, know, thought, I face, thought it was good. I thought it was good. Too. I thought it was going to jump ship. So did I. So that was a good, that was a good twist. Uh, Alex, did you like the uh, that scene as well? Yeah, it was a fun scene. Um, I I know. I mean, it really kind of solidifies everyone with. Um, Chandra is really of an interesting character <laughs> since last season. And um, he, we're really kind of buying into, really going into this full on aggressive heel situation, which I'm really all for. And I would, and I'm excited to see the first potential breakup of a faction, honestly. I, I'm excited for where the story leads overall. Oh my gosh! This the, bugs. This must have been like the civil war of your heart for you, bud. <laughs> These are like your two favorite. Like, I mean, obviously, besides Chance, like, oh man, this I can't imagine. Well, the boys there. going after each other. I know it was it was it was hard to watch. I was like, don't do it, Ace. Don't do it. Don't do it, Chandra. Yeah, I was getting pulled apart. But you're not uh, telling Winston about it. Which why why? <laughs> you're not doing favorites. I don't know. Exactly. Uh, but so uh, before we get some patrons in, uh, uh, patrons obviously get into the uh, get into the stream yards now and then we'll we'll bring them in for questions for Chance and Alex. Uh, but yes, yeah, so any question, Discord questions for the pound for pound best player in the game in Chance Alex? Well, first in we have opinion. a stream lives from Tishka Productions saying, other than the Schmodown bookie interrupting, this has been another great show. Congrats to the Frankie and Chance on their wins. Awesome to have Alex back on the Outlaw Nation, even with those ugly birds on her shirt. Hashtag Royals. Hashtag the birds are <laughs> ugly. <laughs> the I, I'll forever be, I don't care what anyone says, even if they have a losing streak for 20 years, I will forever be a Cardinals fan because my grandpa was a Cardinal. And as a result, it's in my blood. That's St. Louis fine. is a whole thing. That and also, oh, uh, do we want to talk about the Stanley Cup with the Blues? So. Nope. Nobody here. I don't even think Boggs could tell you the basic rules of hockey. If I, I, if I gave Boggs, if I offered Boggs a hundred dollars right now to, to to basically describe a hockey game, I don't think he could. No, I think I think I could. I played really? the games back in the day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Basic description of hockey in ten seconds. Go. You got a puck and the and the uh, handle things, and you you try and score the the goals, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. 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 The fact that he said puck. puck. I tell you what, put a hundred pounds, a hundred dollars each time for that. Thank you. 
You said puck. That's a winner right there. Hmm. So there what's go. the Discord say? Okay, so first we have from Chris Taylor going, Chance, in your eyes, is this your biggest win in the movie trivia showdown so far? No. No. It's, it's my biggest win in singles, but not my biggest win, period. Yeah, I would agree with that. Because yeah. singles-wise, yeah. In terms winning, of winning the belts is a little bit more important, right? Yeah, in terms of in wins, just period. I think beating being the Shire Wolves is a bigger win. Being Founding Fathers every time is a bigger win than this. Um, and IG beating Mike's a pretty big win. Beating Parker was a big win. But in terms of singles, this is my biggest win so far. And we have Aisha Kenya, friend of the show, goes Chance for your five point question. Did you really need all your JTEs, or were you stalling to build up suspense? You know, the funny thing is, was I know, so I'm, I'm not saying this. When I first heard the question, I thought it was oh, David Banderas. Then as time went, I'm like, wait, that seems too easy. It could it be Stephen Ray? He was also, I think, part of that scene. He's also a vampire for that coven. And I, just, I, I had to think about him. Just like it's one of it's one of those two. But I, you know, I'm going with him. But I just the first thought that came to my head. But Stephen Ray, then I, I, I fucking lose. But yeah, I, and I, I love that movie. But I just haven't seen it in I haven't seen it in so long. I can tell you like so many other details about that film. But like as far as like Armand, for some reason, it was escaped me in the moment. Or else I would I probably would have ended it quick. No, no, I wouldn't. Have. I still would have checked it. I'm like I'm like a hundred percent sure. But yeah, as far as like, I was like, there's like a 90 percent answer, and I want to take a little more time because it's it's an important thing. I, I had to make sure I was right about this one. You wanted to finally hit that five in singles and uh, get rid of that reputation because yo, Chance can hit his five, man. I I, I, def, I defy any Shmoda competitor to answer my Johnny Swade question I had against Erwin. Yeah. And I because because no because nobody could. Yeah. And then we got here from Drunken Prayer going. Chan, what fan leagues are you? What fan leaguers are you most looking forward to eventually being part of the movie Trivia Showdown? Event. I mean, it's, I mean, it's hard to it's hard to peg because again, it's just a thing where it's who Harloff picks. But mm -hmm. as far as ones who haven't been picked, or as far as ones who haven't been picked that could be really well, or they could do really well in this league, um, hmm, it's hard because like a lot of them are picked up. Because like well, I would have said Jacoby, but Jacoby's already picked up. I think Jacoby's a fantastic player. Uh, buddy Boatman, Caleb Boatman, I think is a really good player. I think he would do well. He was brought in. That's what comes to mind immediately. I'm sure if I got more time, I could think of more names for you. Because those fan leaders, because you've got the FCL coming up. I can't wait to see them transition to that, and then eventually uh, transition into this league. It's going to be a big things are coming. Big things are coming. And then we have um, from Chris Taylor, Alex, is there a fan leaguer who's not in the showdown that could be an elite player? Because you also are a wonderful manager in the uh, I, 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 I don't mm -hmm. even know who you are. It's like, like, Dan, like Thanos. Like Thanos. I don't even know who you are. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. I don't, I don't, it doesn't matter. Um, uh, I have a, I have a fleet of them. Um, I was like, I do manage, I do manage seven competitors in the fan leagues, and I have uh, I have a defending belt champion on my faction, which I love. I have uh, several people that I think are incredibly talented and that have are on have been doing really consistently well in teams and singles, and so I'm really excited for them. Um, but just a few, just to name a few, would have to say um, Jeff Alterman, Alan Smithy, aka uh, Ryan Chandler. Um, um, also, Jonathan Caro. I think he, they're pretty fantastic, and I they're they can be pretty wicked in promos as well. So I think I would love to think it's just a matter of time for them. I would love to see Alan Smithy because he's here, a member of the Outlaw Nation. We love you here, the director. And then uh, we got for Jer those, uh, Jeremy Miller, Alex. Do you still want to try and enter the Schmodown one day, or? Do you just like being a fan and an analyst? Um, I, I love the idea of competing. Um, I really, really do. And then I, like in December, actually, actually I really put my name. I actually almost put in my an audition tape to go in. And I was told that they're they're actively looking for females. And so I would be a, um, I would be a shoe in and everything, obviously. But uh, I had some stuff that happened behind the scenes that made me regret wanting to be a part of it. And so I ended up not turning in my audition tape. And it kind of made me not really want to be 
public for a bit. So hence my, I've been away for a little bit, so. And then uh, Jeremy Miller too going chance. Oh, I, I, uh, just a real quick, sorry, just to interrupt yeah. there because I didn't want to leave that on that, Alex. I hope you know you are very much welcome in this community of the Schmodown, mm -hmm. especially by us. We've been very honored to have you on the show now twice, and I, I I hope that time off was was what you needed. But I also wanted you to know that like anytime you want to talk Schmod, I want to be a part of it. Just let us know because we'd be more than happy to have you and Soul be really the best parts of this show every single time. <laughs> We yeah, just we're need to have needed. a Soul and Alex party. That's, That's what we need. Like a Soul and Alex show. That's what we need. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. We'll, we'll leave the boys away. Just you and I. It'll be great. It, it would just be like you, like a you and I in Orlando again. Remember? Yes. <laughs> oh God, so much fun. <laughs> I remember, like when we were at the live event, I was literally like crushing your hand the entire time, and I was like, so, so. <laughs> And then also my favorite Alex moment that I have is in Orlando, Gucci taking off his shirt and Alex just yelling, sexy, and he pointing, that's right. <laughs> oh. But I also do want to clarify, there's nothing sexier than my husband's gams. So the best gams in the business. I believe it. <laughs> true, true, best gams. And then we have Jeremy Miller here going, uh, Chance, how many different pairs of sunglasses do you go through, and do you ever get tired of wearing them in a match? Actually, just one. Actually, just one. It's, it's literally this, I've been wearing the same glasses since I debuted in the Schmodown. Would you cry if you ever lost them? I mean, they were expensive, so yes, I would cry if I lost them. Yeah. I mean, didn't Laura Kelly, didn't you give them to Laura Kelly for that? For her match? <laughs> I managed to ship them out. She sent, she sent them right back. Is that Boba Fett behind you? I keep meaning to ask you, Chance, on your what? windowsill. Is it a Boba oh, Fett on your windowsill? Good, good eye, actually. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Well, you know, Star Wars How guy. can you see that? It what looks like Boba eyes? Fett, right? He's got the he's got you, blaster. You, okay, okay, Chance, can I ask you a really random question? Do you know the song um, Fett's Vet by MC Chris? I think so. Can you rap it? <laughs> no, because I don't know the words. Can I can't, but okay. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you want to go ahead, Alex? Was <laughs> I was going to see if we could like, rap together and have a moment, but <laughs> if, 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 if I, when I, I'll learn the song, we can, we can try again later. But... I think Rogan <laughs> would be mad if the video got demonetized if we had a rap video. Because if we had a rap <laughs> no, video. it'll be for next time when we have Alex and <laughs> Chance on together. They'll rap. <laughs> uh, and then going, speaking of random questions, Preston, we love you around here. He wants to ask. Chance and Alex, what are your favorite Pokemons? None. Oh, I, fuck, I, I fucking hate Pokemon. Oh, like if, if, if I can, you're in the, you're in the wrong place you know, for like, that chance. I remember there was a commercial in which like like a bunch of Pokemon were getting on a bus and were getting like put into like a car compactor. Yeah, I was yeah. rooting for the guy putting him in the car compactor. <laughs> wow, how could you? This is heartbreaking. This is also like heart silver breaking, heart gold breaking. I, 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 um, there you uh, go. Okay. I, just, I, don't, I don't care not to come by a real name. The, the, the Japanese Mickey one. That, that one. That's a fair one. I don't care. <laughs> I I played like uh, Game Boy on Game Boy Color, and in the original Game Boy, I played Pokemon Gold, Silver, Pearl, Blue, Red, Yellow, etc. Crystal, Black like 50 times um, before I ended up discovering other stuff. <laughs> but, um, that's a very complicated question. But depending on my mood, I, 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 when I was in grade school, I sang the poker rap for my grade school talent show. Cause you know, I'm so cool. That won't um, get I, uh, uh, copyrighted. So if you want to do that real quick, <laughs> please go ahead. <laughs> Oh no! I <laughs> me talent shows back in grade school is that Pulpasaur, Ivysaur, Venusaur. <laughs> I no, I used to. Well, thing is, I it was also um, because I, uh, I I went through like fifteen years of speech therapy, and I had a very very severe lisp going growing up, and um, that was definitely one of the exercises I would do in order to help train myself. So. Hell yeah. And as a result, I knew that sucker like the back of my hand. So I would train all year for that one song. Oh, but yeah. That rules so hard. 
No, not when you're like 10 years old. <laughs> when oh. you're like not the coolest person. <laughs> but you're cool in our hearts. Yeah, damn those other. Let me find those other 10 year olds. Where are they at? <laughs> I've been but, holding on to this all show, waiting for a moment. <laughs> But I am a I am a water girl. I am a Blastoise girl. As a result, I love me some water Pokemon. There you go. Bogs, I want to know what your favorite Pokemon is. I'm not as I'm not as bad as Chance. Like I don't hate it. Like I I, I liked it when it was like when it was like you won't yeah, call it a Pokey kid, Man like my grandma. No, but I know like Charizard and Squirtle and Pikachu. There we go. You know, yeah. So one of them, I guess. But I'm not as disrespectful as Chance. I just want to put it out. So. <laughs> Yeah, like Chance literally just turned an entire island of people against him. It was pretty incredible with one sentence. I mean, that's that's fine. Entire I'm, nations. I'm, 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 not gonna sit, I'm not gonna sit here pretending like fucking Pokemon. You get to get views. No. This is the worst thing corruption has ever done in the showdown. <laughs> is have one competitor not like Pokemon? What the fuck? <laughs> I can see this on one of the Schmodown uh, like like websites. Hot take: Corruption's worst quality is their lack of love of Pokemon. Yeah, it's not just me. Like, like, Pokemon movies could totally be an IG. Oh, that first Pokemon movie was theatrically released. The first first one can be an animation in the regular movie. I, I've seen it. That film's fucking terrible, but I, I, I at least seen it. I still cry terrible. watching it. I still actively, <laughs> openly weep watching it, but I'm just saying. Fight, fight I love the bad. opening where they're, the Pokemon are just having a party at the spa. Whenever Fighting is bad. Game That's literally all you do. Category in IG officially, that will 100% be in it. And by extension, be in the animated category as well. I don't think there's enough Pokemon movies, Pokemon to make an IG category based on that. It could probably be like they did like video game movies that would get in, but most video games well, are terrible anyway. I guess so that does count as a video game. At movie. the I very least, Detective that's... Pikachu is going to come up. That counts. I, I, I've seen that. that. That that's the best Pokemon thing I've seen. I, John, I'm not what's your favorite Pokemon? Against that, he, he's pretty fantastic. I mean, damn it! <laughs> like it sounds so stupid. Then you see it, and you're like, "Fuck! It's not. How did this happen?" Oh, it's it's stupid, but it's just like less stupid than everything else. Yeah. John, so you cry at Pokemon, Pokemon, but you you, you hate Rocky. Wow. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Interesting taste. I mean, you you all you all watch people fight, but you watch animals fight each other to the to the death. Yeah, you know what? That's if you watch the episodes, the lore is there that they like fighting. They choose to do it. <laughs> Uh, all right. Thank you. I'm gonna stick you in this little ball and yeah. always freak you out to beat the shit out of your cousins. And they love it. Oh, they they love it, Chance. I'm telling you, these these Pokemon, they're just asking, please, sir, put me in a ball and let me out sometimes to beat up my cousin. That's what they all say. Hey, if John, who's your like favorite Pokemon movies, before we get out like, of this thing? If we're gonna potentially have like trash movies like Mortal Kombat Annihilation. Up in IG, as well as Pokemon, the first movie, or Assassin's Creed. Assassin's Creed really bad. It's so awful. Prince of Persia is worse than all of them. So it's here we so go. I would say Assassin's Creed is the worse. The Shmobinati's in the chat. I can't help but note my favorite person is here. The Shmobinati's in the chat. I can't believe it. Finally, no, they're not. real. The doesn't care about us. They it care is. about us enough to show up. Well, not the real Shmobinati. This is like one of those fake Shmominatis. No, this, this is, is the video. real one. And Shmominati is a real word because it's just long enough that if you type each individual letter at, of it fast enough, Google or uh, YouTube stops you from finishing the word because it's spam. Just long <laughs> enough that you can't type the whole thing out in single letters. So How cruel. good to know. Folks, I know John's favorite Pokemon is probably from Gen 1. Mine's from Gen 3. Nope. Gen 2 for you? Totodile, baby, let's keep it going. Totodile, that's a cutie. Mine's a Blaziken. Love me a Blaziken. Oh, sure. Uh, Whip it over to the patrons who are at the $10 level here in the Outlaw Nation. They come in every week. First up to bat to come on in and ask our lovely guests some questions is none other than our man from across the border, the northern one. Canada rocks. Bring them on in. How's it hey, going? Hey, everyone. Okay. Hey. hey, Alex. Nice to see you again. And uh, nice to meet Hi. you, Chance. First of all, 
Uh, I, I want to say that the Roka usually gets very upset when I wear this, but today it's appropriate. There we go. <laughs> yeah. I love that shirt, man. I wear it every chance I get. Just great design. Oh, and also you, Amer you Americans are repping your little baseball teams. Well, okay, you can stay in your little American bubble, but in the rest of the world, we play a game called football. That's right, football, not soccer, and get over it. We play football here. Go Yankees. Yankees. Good man. Yeah. Sorry, I, I agree with you. Um, um, football by your version, yes, like not the US version of football. Um, exactly. I, remember I uh, went to a few matches when I was in college when I was studying abroad, and it is a very different culture. Well, uh, American football, yeah, we do. It's Canadian football, yeah. It's a little bit different yeah, rules, but we do have. It. Yeah, my dad played Canadian. Uh, oh, he uh, he played in the CFL. Mm -hmm. Oh wow, that's awesome. Uh, can I ask what your dad's name was? Uh, Darius Ellison. Oh my God, I think I know who that is. I will look him up later. Uh, who did he well, play for? I forget. He told me about. I think he played in Calgary, if I'm not mistaken. Calgary. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, not the Thai Cats, which was my team. But uh, uh, anyway, so uh, ba back to the greatest game of all time, which is the Schmodown. <laughs> uh, I, I, I have a question for you, Chance, because sure. this is your first win, uh, uh, hopefully on the way to a championship match, right? Hopefully. Which would be more satisfying? If you took down uh, like, like an icon like Murrow or, or, or if you're the first one, to take down uh, Collins as as uh, and become champ. Which yeah. one, honestly, which one would be more satisfying? I Man, I've beaten Dan enough times to the point where this. Is oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, in singles, singles a different animal. Singles a different animal. Uh, being an icon like Dan, probably, probably because I mean, he's out of my team. I think I think for like optics, it'd be funnier if I was the first one to beat Collins because just like yeah, the only person that can beat him is someone who's on his team. <laughs> That's how good we are. Oh, wait a minute. The, the, you can't actually do that, can you, with the rule change now? It'd have to be a triple match. I totally forgot. Yeah, I, yeah, I think so. It'd be, it'd be tougher. But, but even though, I'd still be beating Collins. If, like, if say it was like me, Collins, and somebody else, I'd still be beat Collins in that match. That's <laughs> true. That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, so I think, I think, I think it'd be funny if like, the only person to beat Collins came from his faction. Actually, I didn't even think of that. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Uh, I think Sharon would absolutely, I mean, Shannon would absolutely love it. Uh, now, uh, one last question before I go for everyone. I love the new categories in, in, um, uh, in the IG. Now, who do you think is the player that's going to be hurt most by those categories? Or who do you think the player that's going to be helped most by those categories? If anybody. And we kind of, we kind of the guy thought Shannon would get hurt really badly by it because like, that's true. Movie, he, just doesn't, he admitted like he's a movie he doesn't care about. So we're already seeing the effect of that. And I think this would help anybody who, anybody who's like thought about, like singles players who thought about IG, but haven't really like, eh, maybe not. Give it of like this new accessibility, like it makes it like more appealing. I think someone who benefit from this is Oyama, because like he's uh -huh. like a, more, a broader knowledge base. Like doesn't get into like the nitty gritty as you one of those players. Champ. Um, but I think that I think he could do really well with these new categories. Someone like Dan, same thing. Alex, please uh, uh, go ahead. Hmm? Yeah, Alex, Alex what do you, wanna... you think? <laughs> oh, um, um, so are you talking about specifically in IG? Like yeah, for those categories. Yeah, what or actually, it, uh, who in IG would it help to change it up? Who do you think in uh, IG player will be best helped by those categories in singles? Do you um, know what I mean? Okay, I, I, I know. I, I know quite a few competitors that are slowly but surely trying to make specific IG slices strengths, even though they don't compete in IG, just because it could be like a secret strength of theirs. Um, I'm not gonna name any names in the categories, obviously. Uh, <laughs> but, um, what's the point of coming on here if you're not gonna spill the beans, Alex? Come um, on, spill but, the beans. <laughs> but okay, however, okay. some of the newer, um, the newer directorial categories like Kurosawa, Frank Capra, Capra, sorry, Frank Capra, for example. Man, where did my list go? I can't remember where I had my list, but I had like a list of all of all the new categories, and there was like, a handful where I was like. 
in JLo, we finally got a JLo category. And I'm like, I know for a fact all my rom-com girls, like Video Drew and Janine, they're all over this new, <laughs> new category. So I'm pretty excited. Okay, I'll for all the deep cut cell questions. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't hear that. Deep cut said, what? I said, I'm looking forward to all the deep cut the cell questions. Oh, <laughs> the cell. I love the cell. It's just... I don't know. I, I think I'm the only fan. Your boy, your boy Tarsum. <laughs> it's a haunting movie. That movie, like, like I had nightmares for weeks after watching that one. The imagery. <sighs> the horse split into like eights or tenths or whatever it was. Uh, oh, but about the weird incest, but that too. Oh. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. Anyway, I uh, th thank you so much. I really look forward. Uh, th welcome back, Alex. And I can't wait till you get a title match. Honestly, I, I am a huge fan, as you can see. Uh, you. And it was fantastic when you actually uh, like that. That were you. You guys are still together. Are you the only team that's still together? No, no, we got a couple. Final exams still together. Exams still together. No, no, no. I meant uh, oh. for, from the uh, corruption, like because you guys mm, were anarchy. put together during yeah, anarchy, anarchy, anarchy so. yeah. Well, odd couples. Odd, odd couple. Oh, yeah. odd couple. Odd couple. Yeah, yeah. The chance. But yeah, we're it. We're it. Wow. Yeah. No, that's amazing. Yeah, because anyway. founding fathers are broken up. Yeah. True. Uh, yeah. Michael, <laughs> thank you so much for hanging Thank out, you man. guys, and uh, always you, great bro. to be on. Thank Have you, Rico. Next up, we keep them coming. We got Josh. Bring them on, Sean. What's up? What's hey, up? What's oh, up? we got the Cowboys love. What's Actually, up? Colin, so I'm originally from Louisville, so I also do rep Lamar Jackson. Let's go, baby. You know yeah. what it's about. Oh, I need to get yeah, you're my, really, uh, really know how to pick a winner. Also, there, also guys, a little fun oh, I'm fact. sorry, Chase. And, what was that? I couldn't and, hear you. Yeah, been. exactly. So uh, me and Soul are actually alumnus of the same university. So, yeah, and we've got a big conference uh, championship game to win tonight to go to the tournament. So, what what chance? I'll watch that game. I'll watch that. Western game. Kentucky. It should be on CBS Sports I'll Network. It. I'll watch it for sure. It comes on at uh, nine o'clock Eastern. So here in about thirty minutes. Um, so my first question is uh, for Chance. Um, so also been it's it's been awesome seeing your journey for one thing. Uh, from literally. Them, I think you're the first fan leaguer that actually helped, lived up to the hype when you came in. Uh, uh, first period, so yeah. Right. Well, I think they would bring in people for like the free for all and stuff beforehand, and then they just didn't, you know, it was like fizzled out from there. Um, but you were the first one from Kalinowski being like, who the hell is this? Like, I think they put a fake name in. I think that was the exact quote on it. I don't know. You can, you can let me know on that um, because he was playing a character anyway, but cause that's not Kalinowski in real life. But, um, but going from that to seeing you now as being like a grizzled vet. You know, even though you don't have any facial hair, you're still a grizzled vet. <laughs> um, but my question is, I guess, to kind of go back to what you're saying with, like, hitting all the eye questions and, like, you know, you know your weaknesses and stuff. How do you um, study for, like, your deficiencies but also make sure you're still good to go on your other categories to keep, you know, fresh on everything? It is a matter of balance. Like, I'm not going to spend significant time studying a category that I feel like I know really well. Right. Because it takes my time away from take categories that I feel like I don't know as well well but since i'm like you can't you can't like rest on your laurels like it's it's kind of like the way you're like for as much time you spend on this guys like throw a few questions from this like if say if i'm really good at i don't know classics say like i'm studying like say i'm studying 70s i'm, I'm studying a lot of time in 70s every now and then i'm gonna go back to classics just like just keep keep it fresh it's a matter of circulating a matter of you know keeping Staying, staying on your toes and staying adaptable and staying fluid to like whatever can come up because any anything can happen anything can come up on the wheel anything can come in round three so just a matter of like you know to have your strengths know your strengths and don't like don't forget about your strengths but keep your mind elsewhere because expanding is how you're going to get places and schmodown and the other one is just kind of a funny one so this thing right you do it every match yeah Everyone wants to know: Is it are you are you getting ready to bow to Mephisto? So he actually shows up somewhere. Like, who are you bow getting ready to bow to? Like, I mean, don't don't stop doing this. By the way, it's a staple now. Like, you do I'm it every not, match. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna stop. It's, it's, it's a thing now. I can't stop. It's, it's, right. It's in my, it's in my contract. But. I don't know if yeah. I don't know if anybody else has pointed that out, but I noticed you do this every match. Uh, but don't quit doing this because you know, it's, it's, it's the thing I started doing during Park Ride. Never and I just never stopped because like, yeah, like works. 
Yeah, what what brought that on? Because like some like I've been in fan leagues, and far as spoiler alert, I'm not gonna be one of the fan leagues gonna join the thing anytime soon. I'm average at best. I think Alex was she was managing one of the opponents I played in a match with, and had, had like the worst showing ever. Um, so it's not gonna be me. But like, how do you like for like the like everyone always tries to figure out where the hands they always forget it, but you're always like solid with it. So like, how did you come up with that and not to make yourself rattled and keep in the zone doing that? I used to be a martial artist. Uh, which is where this, which is where this came from. Gotcha. And when a matter of, like keeping my hands on screen, like nothing, this is the this is literally like the thing that feels most comfortable to me. Right. I'm like I'm like I'm there. I'm steady. Uh, I I you can see both my hand, which is important. And like literally like nothing like nothing else. Like I'm not gonna do this. I'm not gonna do this. Like like nothing else. Not, nothing else feels natural. Like this is the thing that feels most natural to me. But funny thing, only this side. Like I can't do this. <laughs> it's like a right hand left hand thing. Literally, yeah, but like that's that that's that's literally it. Like I used to be a martial artist. And this is my this is my salute, and yeah, like when it comes to sh- when it comes to keep my hand on screen, this just feels, it feels natural, it feels comfortable, and it feels like I just I, I don't think about it. All it's, right, it's you heard like, it here first. Now you know what where Chance gets that from, but we still don't know who he's getting right about to though. So <laughs> we'll see. maybe 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 we'll find out one day. Who knows? Yeah, I was Alex, any uh, any uh, kind of tips for for Josh? Because uh, you coached him to a loss, right? No, no. Well, she wasn't my manager. I had a fake manager. Yeah, but uh, I would just like okay. say something off screen just to kind of yeah, play yeah. with it because I was the only one of the three. I was in a triple threat match. I don't know if Alex oh, remembers wait, that. I can't remember who. Which one of my competitors did you face? I don't remember. It's been. It was in the old defunct league, uh, the sh- the face off league. Who's you, John? So I don't. I don't remember who it was. Oh, has that? Is that's been years. Ago. Still a thing? Yeah, I haven't is heard it? that name in a long, long time. <laughs> oh, long time. <laughs> But yeah, I still compete in like other other things. I literally had a match. Uh, what? Which leagues? Um, the one that oh, what's it called? I literally it literally just posted on my match. Um, Full metal movie trivia challenge. It, it's a opening night, I think. Opening Is that the trivia. one that uh, misspelled your name? Yes, that's the one that misspelled my name. Oof. By the way, John, it's Mabry. It's okay. People say Mabry all the time. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm like I said, I'm from Kentucky. People say Mayberry. I don't even know where these are. <laughs> so I think that's uh, that. that's probably Stefan Mayberry's fault. So I don't think you. Yeah, that's not your fault. So, but yeah, no, I I do I, I still compete in like I do like the Golden Ticket, uh, which is um, I do that. <laughs> oh wow, that's a good one, Chris. So the Cobra can join Cobra Kai. Never die. <laughs> But yeah, I, I competed one night trivia. I did um, I've and you know I really I hit my five pointers and stuff in that because I've been actually focusing. But like that match that I was in that you uh, were a manager for, I was just I was in between jobs and it was not a good lineup. But when someone wants me to play, I'm going to play. So. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, well, I yeah, hope to have one of my competitors go up against you in the future, and I can oh. just yell at you. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good well, to me. Well, Josh, thanks for hanging out, brother. We will yep. see you next time. Up next, Drunken Prayer. Bring him on through. Hey, uh, how's it going? Not bad, man. Okay, so first question from, I guess, didn't have a question for Alex, but I do now. How much did you have to drink when you yelled sexy at Finstock? <laughs> we had a lot. <laughs> do you remember? We we were buying each other's drinks that whole time, so I don't know how much we had. I I remember it was in my it was in our white claw phase. Oh, <laughs> yes. God. phase. And um, I remember they they poured the white claw into a glass with ice, and they was like, "Wait, I didn't ask you if you wanted it this way," and I was like, "Well, it's already that way." So. With that, and then I think they also had like wine slushies that we got really into. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but um, yeah, I, I do want to clarify as well. Like, no one's gonna gonna deny Gucci is an is an attractive man, obviously, and I can yell sexy for taking off a shirt. But again, no one has better gams than my husband. So, if my husband were to walk on stage wearing his the Gucci shorts that he won. Totally, I would also yell even even more aggressively. Hey. Yeah, Truly, a moment we'll never forget. Drunken, anything else for our guest? Uh, yeah, the main the main question was for Chance. That just came up because of the conversation earlier. <laughs> 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 uh, so, main question for Chance: 
people talk a lot about kind of people who do character acting in the showdown. I think you're one of the people that doesn't really get brought up much in that conversation for always staying in character. Yeah. And I was just kind of wondering, how is that? Is like, is that a lot of your character just your real personality? Like, how much of that comes in and helps you stay in character? Uh, you know, it's just this is where time where I get I get in the zone, and this and I feel like it works as competitor. I just do that, and I can my character the same way. Well, you get you get in a zone. You can't shake us. You can't stop us. And we're just gonna go out here as hard as we can. And I feel like that it works well for my competitive spirit and my competitive nature in the game. Uh, I, I I really would like to bring Cobra in more scenes. You know, have have him do some more stuff. Maybe got me to call to Shannon after she's freak after she's freaking out of Mike. <laughs> I I heard from, I heard from two states away. What's going on? But uh, no, yeah. I mean, I do this for. I think I get enough clap with, with my with my gameplay. So I mean, character. Yeah, I would love to be seen as a better character in Snowdown, but if I'm seen as a great competitor, I'll take that instead. Well, you're that as well. So well done. <laughs> you are both. Real quick, can I ask you? I sorry, I didn't catch your name. Uh, it's well, it's drunken player on screen. It's Chris in real life. Chris? Okay. Yeah. But um, are you Irish? Uh, Scottish. You're Scottish, damn it. Don't worry, I get accused of being Irish Sorry. all the time, so I, don't worry I, I about that. <laughs> Even I, in my I, own I, town, <laughs> where people know me. Yeah, I mean, my husband and I, we were looking at moving to Ireland for a bit, and so I was like, wait, where in Ireland are you from? So I was like, right here. <laughs> well, and also, Alex, I believe one of your competitors has beat me twice now. Which one? Uh, do you still manage Ryan Payne? <gasps> yeah. Yeah, he's beat me <laughs> twice. <laughs> and one of those times was with a future foot Smowdown competitor, Christina. Oh. In a team's match, she, her, they beat, she beat me in a team's match, <laughs> along with Ryan. I'm still better. I'm going to get revenge at some point. <laughs> but, do. Um, but he's good. I'd like to see him come up from the fan leagues. He has a really strong player and a nice guy as well at heart. So mm -hmm. let him know I said that. For sure. Thanks, Chris. We appreciate you, man. You know where to find us. We're going to be doing a little Are You Smarter Than a Schmodown host a little later. Going on <laughs> trivia. So you know where to find us. Next up, producer Sean, bring him on in. Fifty Shades of Geek dropping on in for a little hot sour. Electro, big man, big Oh, there it is. Oh, 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 there it is. Oh, 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 oh. King Jotian, Dragon Eye, Gasky. Sean, 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 Huh? That was the last section of that. Anyway. We can do this all day. <laughs> yeah, I, I could do this all day. Uh, Chance, as someone who's personally designing a Pokemon fan game right now, I take offense to that, but I'm not going to hold that against you. That's fine. In any case... In any case, that aside, I very rarely root against you in a match. I am almost always rooting for you. It wasn't this time because... I just like the kid a little bit better. Hope you don't, you know, hold it against me. I love you. I love you 99% of the time. Just not when you're going up against the kid. In any case, this, this great match. I, I just wanted to point out that I only got three questions right in that match. So, uh, that just Jay. In any case, uh, first of all, you are an inspiration, my friend. You are, you, you've done what what I and a lot of other people that were mentioned uh, on the show a couple of minutes ago are trying to do, which is trying to get from the fan leagues all the way to the actual Smodan itself. And I just had recently my first uh, my first ever fan league uh, match debut. Did all right, I would say. But uh, yeah, what advice would you have as someone who's done it years ago? What advice would you have for someone like me um, have to uh, uh, i think i messed that up sorry what advice would someone like you have to someone like me and keep in mind and try to put my love of pokemon out of your advice please well this did the pikachu first of all i mean that's my first stuff for first piece of guys but no as far as like being stuff on the family that's what you're asking yeah uh, i'm sorry that's that the last, as, as far as like being successful in the family that's what you're asking like how, how to be uh, just to go forward because right. i just had my okay. first match and yeah. So it's 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 just like it's just like anything, you know. You you go in, you test, you see, okay, what am I good at? What am I not? And then you get to work because like it's the, like you don't play your match in. It, it makes sense. 
you don't play your match in the match. Like you're playing the match starts in preparing for the match. Because like that's what the bulk of this in any like competitive anything is. It's practice. Pra- practice, repetition, get getting knocked down, getting back up. You just it's a thing you have to keep working at. Like I like even like if you go back to my early family matches, I wasn't that great. I was good. I wasn't great. I wasn't someone who was gonna get called up like I was I wasn't someone gonna get called to majors, but if you see like you if you see like I make I make a transition. I I adjust, I adapt, and that's something that's very important when you compete in something like this. It's something you know, expand, expand your knowledge, just keep practice. That's the best advice to give anybody. That's okay. really all you have to do, and eventually, you know, you'll see the results. Okay, thank you. Right now, I'm just trying to put some more matches under my belt. I, I just compete, compete, compete as much as possible. I'm on this show every week, as these people can attest. Uh, I'm doing the uh, the trivia part on this show, but do you have anyone that I can maybe get in, get uh, in contact with regarding more matches? Because that's really what I want for myself. Because I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna compete. I just don't. I'm terrible at networking. I don't know how to find people. Right. I don't know who. To okay. Find. So what I would suggest people so just to get, get in contact with uh, Albert Full Metal. Get in touch with uh, Kirk Kow- look at Kowalkowski. Look at for Full Metal Media. Kirk Kowalkowski is the guy who runs it now, I believe. Uh, so get in touch with him. And Multiplex, I want to recommend. Get in touch with Caleb Coho. He's a, he's a, good, he's a good dude and running that league. I talked to him. That, that, that's where they had my first match on Multiplex. Oh, really? Okay. So, yeah, that, that's, that, those are the two I know. For, those are the two I have experience. And uh, Matt piece. Thomas over at the Really Trivia Showdown. That's where um, that's where our boy Rick Raddis came from as well. So, uh <laughs> He's over there as well, so look over there to get, you know. I mean, Matt, Matt's always. I mean, Boggs and I play matches over there. They're great. They're super nice to be around and just really inviting. Okay. So there, there, there's great space too. I think uh, that's one thing that's come out of this. I think we were all talking about that or earlier. The the conversation came from the the movie trade face off, but it was like the original, and now all of these different things have spawned off. Now we got the FCL. Look, we got a manager of the FCL up in here right now, telling us what's up. So. 50 we appreciate you man bringing up in here and thank you making sure we keep ourselves humble we love it folks this has been a crazy show chance you had a crazy week man it's a hell of a match we loved watching it and we loved having you on here i'm gonna throw it around the horn final thoughts for chance before we get to some trivia on this show box what you got for your boy no nothing man congrats on the big big win first you know big uh kind of hill that you climb in singles you know you beat kind of a top player now just kind of one step at a time right one one kind of head at a time until you get to the, the title shot because obviously we know you're big in ig uh you know i think the new kind of uh categories can help obviously you know your singles player as well you know you're kind of well versed in them already so yeah obviously looking forward to your teams whenever that will happen so yeah keep up the good work man you're the first three uh appearance on our show so yeah i hope we uh, keep that up and yeah all the best man you're you're my favorite player uh in terms of best pound for pound player in the game so yeah keep it up man uh, you definitely win a title this year it depends just the question is how many for me <laughs> thank you thank you and mr Barr, anything for mr ellison no you're incredible and i'm excited to see if and when you get your chance to go up again for some revenge against either oyama or bibiani this is going to be another Great year for corruption, I'm sure, and I'm excited to see what part you have to play and what's to come for the game. Hmm. Soul, tell us, man, how gonna... great he is. Just, just keep telling him how great he is. <laughs> I'm gonna echo what everyone else said. He's a great player, always fun to watch, and I'm glad that he's been on this show. And this is my first time actually being on the show with him, so this has been a lot of fun, and uh, I can't wait to see what goes forward this year. Yeah, you're definitely getting that belt. Thank you. Thank you starting to hear alex please let that if, if you can tell him how great he is you can tell him whatever you want. chance can suck it no just kidding <laughs> <laughs> um but uh yeah i mean i am just reaffirming everything what everyone's saying i mean pretty spectacular can't wait to see you go into the season obviously i i don't like the idea of like chanting from the get-go um, chance three belts kind of thing because I feel like that's like a terrifying thing <laughs> um, and uh, it's 
I, I, I don't want to put that kind of pressure on you this early in the game because I know obviously you have the potential to do amazing things and get belts in all three divisions, obviously clearly already having one down. You know, I feel like the others are just a matter of time. So, yeah. Well, Chance, everyone said it, man. You know, you know, you got a home here, man. So anytime you want to come around, just come on, hang out, and you know where to find us, man. So going forward, we can't wait to find out what the next match is. We, obviously, we'll know next Friday. So, Sean, what's up? Yeah. Uh, I wanted to just make sure Chance has equal time because we gave uh, Saul uh, a little time to cut a promo, and so did Frank. So I was wondering if Chance, once he had the opportunity to call out anybody or say anything, the floor is now yours. Uh, no one I want to call up. One thing I will say is you've seen, you've seen what I can do. You've seen what I can do already. Well, that's the one thing you've learned about me through all my seasons. Every year I get better. And what you saw from me last season, that's just a taste. That's just the appetizer. That's not even a fraction of what I'm capable of, just as a player in all divisions. So, I know. People look at me and say I'm not a closer. I'm not someone who can finish. And I know that. But something's going to change. And if I have to rip the head off of every competitor in the Schmodown, I'm going to do it. <laughs> you saw what I did to the kid. That kind of treatment is going to be waiting every single person that's in front of me. I don't, care who's in fr I don't care who's in front of me in singles. You're going down. And when from my IG, you're going down. Mike, <laughs> me and Mike, please, we are going to get our teams both back. Don't even, don't even sweat it. Point is, by the time this is all done, I'm going to be seen as the greatest triple threat competitor the league's ever seen. There you go. Those need to be set. And that's it. Hot. Steaming. Sorry. Steaming. Damn. This was fun. <laughs> See you all next time. Thank you, Chance. Thank See you, Dave, buddy. Good luck, buddy. All right, folks. Alex, it's the last time you've been on. We've implemented a little segment on the show called Are You Smarter Than a Schmodown? after show host I'm so we've invited on the members of the I'm outlaw nation really. to test their wits <laughs> and see if they can hang and soul the librarian herself comes up with the best questions outside of the schmodown you're gonna find or maybe even south of the mason dixon who is knows? it actually movie trivia yep. yes it is yeah okay. uh, you, worldly trivia you don't need a whiteboard history geography what are we doing here yeah. <laughs> well um it's know. actually miami heat trivia oh boy oh boy <laughs> Well, I'm Apollo will get all of these right. <laughs> I, I was like, I can quiz y'all on Studio Ghibli trivia, so I feel you. What do you got to do? Well, without further ado, we have some folks waiting in the chat to come on in and play a little Are You Smarter than a Schmodown host. So come on in. Producer Sean, release the floodgates of all of the outlaw uh -oh. nations to be seen uh -oh. on the screen. Brennan Nation rises. We have Chris. We have 50. We have right Canada. Welcome. Hey, Brennan. Hey, Brennan. Let me get all of your guys' Hi, names Alex. down. Hi. Is Alex playing? She's playing, right? Oh, I think awesome. Christian's all all also like ready to go if he does. But... Alex is awesome. <laughs> Sorry, Alex. It's all five pointers from Seoul. Oh, it is. That, that is actually true. I, the, the, the amount of like the amount of, I'm like I'm actually prepping a friend for a few IG matches, and I'm also helping another friend for a prep for a for a, for a few matches, like regular matches. And so it's I have I always have five million questions ready to go, on no matter the category. Yeah, I just say, we, <laughs> we love you, Alex. <laughs> we love you. All right. Today. So we're going to be doing five questions in the singles division this time around. Oh, boy. Ooh, okay. Bob, you ready? Oh, it means, yeah. Uh, always be closing, right, is the term. Oh, boy. <laughs> That's awesome. John, you ready? Yes. 50, you ready? Alex, you ready? Hands up. <laughs> Hands up. Yeah. Uh, Brennan, you ready? They won't have to handicap this match. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right, are you ready? C. And then Chris, you ready? <laughs> Perfect. Love it. Uh, we will be. Colin's ready, too. 
Colin, I'm sorry, Colin, you're right. Uh, we will be asking Brennan first to answer, and then we'll go it around the horn. All right, so in the so first... I don't cheat. Yeah, so he does In the category of comedies. <laughs> Wesley Snipes, Patrick Swayze, and what actor mm. played drag queens in the 1995 comedy Tu Wong Fu... Thanks for everything, Julie Newmar. I assume spelling doesn't count. Are you, are you asking for any any actor to play the, the drag queens? Uh, I'm looking for a specific character. The third actor, along with them. One. Yeah. Five. Oh, wait, four. No, wait, hold up. Three. You want to repeat? Two. Nope. I got it. One. Brennan. John Leguizamo. Correct. Boggs. I didn't have it. John. John Leguizamo. Correct. 50. What? <laughs> <laughs> Alex. I'm thinking about the wrong drag queen movie. I'm, I had Terrence Stamp. Oh, <laughs> oh, I, I love yeah. better Did soundtrack. You know what drag queen movie I'm talking about? Yes. I'm yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, no. Priscilla Queen of the Desert. 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 John Leguizamo. Correct. And then um, Ryko. Don't look too close at the spelling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got it. You I got see it. John Leguizamo. <laughs> Chris, did you have it? No, it's a Jedward 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 No fair, the Scottish guy has an advantage here. I've never seen the movie. <laughs> but it's full of <laughs> Scottish <laughs> accents. <laughs> right now. One, Brennan. Work. Correct. John. I wrote Dragonsburg. <laughs> 50. Birk. Correct. Alex. I had Burke. Correct. Colin. We live on the Isle of Burke. Correct. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to say Burke. <laughs> Chris. I've never seen the movie, so I had no idea. Oh, boo, <laughs> Scottish person. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no idea. No, I didn't. Apparently, they're right. Scottish. I don't know. In the category of Oscars. Mm. Who is the only person ever to receive an Oscar nomination for acting in a Star Wars movie? Can you just repeat that? So I'll just to make sure yeah. I understand. Who is the only person ever to receive an Oscar nomination for acting in a Star Wars movie? So the only actor who has gotten a nomination. Mm -hmm. For a Star Wait, Wars. Was it, was, it, was it for Star Wars or was it? Any... For Star Wars. For Star Wars. You okay. said nominated. Yes. Five. Come on, John. Uh, repeat, repeat. Yeah. Who is the only person ever to receive an Oscar nomination for acting in a Star Wars movie? Oh, I changed my answer. Oh, boy. Always go with your gut. You know what they say? You can change it. You sure? I don't know if I should because now. Okay. Oh. Five. Four. I have no clue. I don't know. Three, two, one. Brennan. Sir Alec Guinness. That is correct. My man. Oh, shit. 50. Some people call him Alec McGuinness, but no. <laughs> I love the Alec. spelling. Did you see the spelling? I had it wrong. And then uh, Ryko. I had it. I erased it, and I thought it was someone else. Ah. Mm. And Colin had it. And then uh, Chris. Nah, I put Mark Hamill. Just... Uh, Boggs. Yep, Alec Guinness. Correct. And then John. I wrote James Earl Jones. Oh. <laughs> Not a bad guess. Yeah, it's good. An Oscar no, that was my second guess. Ooh, I, I got an Alec Guinness question for y'all. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
who directed Alec Guinness in several um, Oscar-winning films, such as Lawrence of Arabia oh. and Bridge on the River Kwai. David Lean. David Lean. David Lean. Well, that's what I was writing. <laughs> my, fav my favorite movie <laughs> is Lawrence of Arabia. That's why we're supposed to write it down and say it. Oh, sorry. Yes, also, uh, you gotta love, you know, you you gotta love having a very incredibly white English man portray a Bedouin prince. Okay. Yes, <laughs> you gotta love that happens. But we do not do it today, right? Keep this all going. We're gonna go into the category of Hitchcock. Both of you have not seen Bridge on the River Kwai. See it. I like so in the category of Hitchcock. It's great. Which famous actor starred as physician Ben McKenna in 1956, The Man Who Knew Too Much? Love this movie. Is that in Morocco? Can I get a repeat on that one? Which famous actor starred as physician Ben McKenna? In 1956's The Man Who Knew Too Much. I know it's like one of the three Shut up, Box. Want to ask her for best score? For K Sarasaro? Oh my gosh. How many best Box wants to host a soccer podcast. Hitchcock's my strength, man. Hitchcock is my strength. Two, one. Brennan. Jimmy Stewart? Correct. Right. Ooh, that sounded like a guess there, Brennan. Yeah, I know. 50. I'm the man who doesn't know enough. <laughs> oh, nice. Alex. My second favorite leading man in Hitchcock movies, Jimmy Stewart. Right, Uh It is definitely Jimmy Stewart. Correct. Chris. I wrote Jimmy Stewart and then changed it to Paul Newman. And Colin. Nice. Don't play with me. And Boggs. Of course. James Stewart. Boggs got it wrong. I was going to kick him off the show. No, no way. <laughs> and John. I wrote Burke. <laughs> <laughs> Who was your favorite? And, that was my second guess. Okay. And here's the last Ooh. question, which is in the category. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Thank you. <laughs> oh, red wine? No, now she's going to beat us. So Your husband fast. must be so nice. In the category of musicals, <sighs> who plays Franz Liebkind, the man who writes Springtime for Hitler in 2005's The Producers? Are you talking about the the Are you talking about the Are you talking about the character? Or are you talking about the actor? The actor. In, in place, Franz Lipkin in 2005. In the 2005 version. Oh, oh um, 2005. Oh, shit. I'll repeat it. Who plays Franz Liebkind, the man who wrote Springtime for Hitler in the 2005 The Producers? I can answer both. It's so good. Five. Four. Does this count as a cameo? Three. No. Two. No. 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 One. No, it's, it's a role. Will Ferrell, or it's played by Kenneth Morris originally. Oh, ho, 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 ho. nice. Ooh. <laughs> Alex. Springtime for Hitler. Okay. Springtime. Will Ferrell. Correct. Yeah. Colin. Springtime for Hitler <laughs> and Germany. <laughs> this version of the movie is so terrible. <laughs> Reiko. Don't be a dummy. Be a smarty. Come and join the Will Ferrell party. <laughs> Chris. No, nah, I was thinking the original version and then couldn't pull because it's 2005. Five. <laughs> What's in it? John? Yeah, I guessed Matthew Broderick. And 50. Play ya ya ding dong! Will Ferrell. <laughs> All right. We have a tie right now between Colin and Brennan. Shocker. Such a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> I'm upset oh, I missed shocked. the Alec Guinness one. So I'm going to actually ask a Star Wars question because that was the one that I originally wrote. There we go. <laughs> so this is in the and category this is, of. This, uh, for? this is for Brennan and Colin only. Oh, boy. In the category of Attack of the Clones, 
What drink does Obi Wan Kenobi drink at Dex's diner in Attack of the Clones? Yeesh. Whoa, this is a 10 pointer. Yeah. <laughs> Good thing Five. I wasn't tied. I would have lost this one. Four. <laughs> Three, two, one. Brennan. Jawa juice. Correct. Colin. Jawa juice. Correct. Can we get another Jawa juice? <laughs> <laughs> All right, another start. Pretty good. <laughs> another Star Wars question. The category of A New Hope. All right. Which character is the first to speak in Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope? Five, four, three, two, one. Brennan. C3PO. Correct. Colin. C3PO. Correct. So tense. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised a few people knew that Alec Guinness got nominated for an Oscar. I renew up. I'm surprised. I, I, I totally should have got that. I knew that. Yes, yeah, same. He was amazing. In the category of The Force Awakens, what is, what is Finn's Stormtrooper code name before, given, before being given the name Finn by Poe? Code name or Stormtrooper yeah. name? So his Stormtrooper name, yeah. Okay. And if we both get this right, Nobody for sake of sleep. everyone's lives, I say we tie. <laughs> Five. They called Four, him so because he wasn't three, with anybody. Two, one, Brennan. FN2187. Correct. <laughs> Correct, Colin. <laughs> we should ask a five pointer Oscar question. I have one. <laughs> you know? I'll, I'll, I'll take the tie this week. Brennan and I can yeah. carry the tie. Yeah, carry the yeah, yeah. That's yeah. a yeah, one all night. Otherwise, we'll, we'll I'm, not, I'm not going to be nasty and say I want to keep going. <laughs> Brennan's like, I want to be the winner. Okay, yeah. Okay, Royko, though, I got to hear your five pointer. Okay, uh, it, it's uh, it's not my show, so is for, it okay? For no points. Just yeah, for quick, because we need to make our predictions okay. as well for next week, guys. So. All right, so um, in the first ever Oscars, two Best Director uh, mm. people won for Best Director. One for comedy, one for drama. Name one of the winners. Um, that one? That one or yeah, yeah, you're going to have to yeah. repeat that. So in the first Oscars, there wasn't one. There were actually two Best uh, Director Oscars, one for comedy and one for drama. Name one of the winners. Um, was um, oh, um, was it F.W. Murnau? Was that no, one? no, uh, Lewis Milestone or Frank Borsage. Okay, all right. You well, me. Thank you, guys, everyone. You've been wonderful. Right. We have our tie between Brennan and Colin. It'll be broken next week. You yes, better will. will. So, All right. Outlaw Nation, thank you so much for hanging out this week as Bye. we wrap up the show. Alex, before we make our picks, I think we're going to go ahead and say goodbye to you as well. Thank you so much for hanging out with us for so long. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. It was a, it was a fun time hanging out. Well, you're welcome any time, of course. So please do not be a stranger. Like John said before, this is a safe space to talk to Schmo down. So please don't hesitate. If you got a board Saturday night, you know where to find us. Go Yankees, Alex. Hi, Alex. Okay. All right. Fuck off, Sean. All right. Okay. <laughs> Bye, Sean. We couldn't Bye, a good moment See you next time. It's okay. Sean and I were cool. We're all good. <laughs> well, as we say goodbye to Alex, Sean, you might as well bring yourself back on so we can make our picks for this That's true. week. So, Bye, Alex. We're, we're all good. It's all good. It's all okay. love. Well. All right. And then as I we get on to next week's on. matches, we have five of them to choose from. Does anybody actually have? The first picks of the week are going to be between Brandon Hanna 
and Eric Zipper. I'm going to throw it to the man who knew not enough this week, who went one and three. That would be Sean. Who's your yeah. paper? Yeah, I, I, I sucked last week, so that's why I'm wearing the hat. Hopefully it gives me good luck. I'm going to go with Zipper, Eric Zipper. Over to Boggs. These are quick picks. Uh, I'll go Hannah. John Barr. I'm also going to go Brandon Hanna. Soul. Swag, swag, drip, drip, Eric. <laughs> Zippity doo da, zippity a. Not the song. Zippy up in here. Let's go. Not the song. I like the song, not the movie. We got next retired. match. What do we got? We got a Star Wars match with a guest coming up next week from this match. Lacey going up against Evan at the Finstock Exchange. I'm gonna go reverse around the horn. Soul, who you got in this one? Going Lacey. John Barr, who you got? I'm also going Lacey. Boggs? I'll go uh, Gold Leader. Red Leader? What about you? Oh, oh you're calling me Red Leader. Oh, yeah, um, I, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. I was I like, I was confused. Like, I just uh, went with the flow. Yeah, I'm going to go with Evan as well. I'm going to go with Lacey. Throwing us to match number three out of five of the week in singles. Janine of the Stars going up against the Hurricane himself, Jader of the Den. Boggs, over to you. I'm going for Jader Prama. Sean, what about you? Janine. Soul, what about you? 305 represent Jader Paramo. John Barr? I'm also going to edge it to Jader. Give me Janine and the Stars. Let's go. Match number four of the week. A huge singles match. Absolutely huge. We got Bibbs versus Paul. John Barr, who you got? I'm going Bibiani. Soul? Swag, swag, drip, drip. We're going Paul Yama. Liz did it last year. Paul's doing it this year. Sean? Oh, God, where'd you go to be next? Oh, I have no idea. Uh, Paul, I'm taking Box. a guess. I have no idea. I'm the same kind of thing with Sean. I have literally no idea. Um, I'll go Paul as well. I'm going to go Paul as well. Taking Oyama, and I got some confidence in him this week, which brings us to the fifth and final match of the week, the Star Wars Championship of the World. The Demon versus the Hunter. Alex versus Andrew. Soul, I throw it to you first. Alex Damon. John Barr. Alex Damon. Boggs. I'm 100% upset. I'm going for I'm going to go upset every single time Alex plays, so I'll go Demolanta. <laughs> Sean? I said it earlier in the year, uh, Demolanta, so I got to stick with it, Demolanta. Going Damon. Prove me wrong, Alex. We'll see if you, can, if you can figure out a way to lose. I don't know if the guy can figure out a way to lose. But, folks, that's our picks. And that brings us to the end of another episode of the Ultimate Schmodown After Show here on the Outlaw Nation on John Roca's illustrious YouTube channel. I've been, of course, your host, Colin. You can find me at the underscore Seymour's. Wherever I'm sold, box. where can the fine folks find you? Yeah, catch me on uh, here every Saturday, of course, and the Pop Culture Universe. I think this week we're dropping a Coming to America review. Uh, I think we're, we're doing a preview of Falcon Winter Soldier. Next week, Justice League review, reaction. Can't wait for that uh, Schneider Cut review. And yeah, um, and that's it. Just obviously like, subscribe, comment. Thanks everyone so much for the stream labs and stuff. So yeah, you guys are too nice. And Brian, brother, thank you so much for that. We saw the fifty dollar chat come in earlier, man. That was fantastic. Sorry we didn't keep it under three hours. We know that's what you were hoping, but we'll take half. We will take half of that donation. John Barr, speaking of brawlers, you been sitting over there with that bat all night. You gonna whack somebody with that? I just let me find those ten year olds who didn't think Pokemon were cool. <laughs> let me find them. Uh, John Give Barr, me tweets. that happy meal, boy. <laughs> they, there you go. John Barr tweets at Twitter and Instagram twitch.tv slash John Barr. Go to YouTube, look up John Barr. I'm the one that's not a travel blogger. Fantastic. <laughs> and Soul, where can the people find La Biblioteca? You can find me at 
<laughs> yeah, correct, Boggs. Boggs is learning his Spanish. Uh, yes. At Sol Govin on Twitter, at Sol.k.govin on Instagram. And you can find me every Wednesday on the Media Studies Network for Soul Talk. And you can find me with these wonderful folks up there on uh, Pop Culture Universe. So go check that out. Hey, John is actually going to be on Soul Talk before Bob. So, <laughs> ah, <laughs> cool. okay. I need to get a memo. I'll, I'll check it later. You must have already <laughs> asked me that. Yeah, <laughs> well, folks, thank you so much to everybody hanging out in the chat. Everybody who's there every week, we love you guys. Thank you so much for hanging out. You know where to find us next week. We're going to bring down five matches. We're going to have guests on guests on guests. It's going to be crazy. We're going to have a lot to break down. Five matches. It's going to be crazy. Fast, fast, fast. Maybe no trivia. Who knows, Brennan? We might have to be champs for two weeks who knows but that'll do it for this edition of the ultimate schmodown after show folks we'll see you next time and that'll do it folks be good out there outlaw nation we'll see you next time so i'm telling you this show food wars is nuts it's like so much of it is so funny and good and then it just keeps taking turns it keeps taking turns i don't want to look